Hello. Hi, Shelly. How's everybody doing today, this morning? I'm putting a garbage bag in my garbage can because my garbage was full and I had to take it out. So what's everybody up to? If you're in the chat, my glasses are dirty. That's always good. I had I had to take these beads out of here. Let me get my phone out of here before I make a mess with that. I put them in the cornstarch that Kim told me to do, and now they're all done. I think. Mm. I don't know if they need more time or not. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. I did the cornstarch thing with these beads. How much time would you say I should put these in for? I put them in for like 35, 40 minutes-ish. No, it's about 40 minutes. Would that be fine for this? I'm covered in cornstarch. <laughs> I think so. I, I, I'm going to clean off the cornstarch, though. I, I had that other batch in, and then I went to bed, and I didn't put these in until this morning. I was like, oh, yeah, i got to put those in. Yeah, it seemed to have worked. An hour? Oh, really? So they should go back in for a little while? Dang it. All right. I'm a, I, the only reason I, I pu pulled them out a little early is because, and I think it's because of how I had these other ones laying. I'm going to have to sand this one because it got a little burnt mark on it. But I think that's because of where that, where that opal clay was in the mylar, you know? So I'm just going to sand that one down a little bit, like sand it. That'll take that off, I think. But So I was nervous with these, but that's because, and that one too a little bit. That's because they were, of the way they were hanging on my rack. But it's 30 minutes per quarter inch. Is it? I thought it was, I thought it was 15 minutes per quarter inch. Wait a minute. Let me read um, do not microwave. I'm not microwaving. What's the actual thing? Oh, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. 30 minutes per quarter. Why did I think it was 15 minutes per, per, per quarter inch? What the hell made me think that? Okay. I'll put them back in. It's fine. They're still a little warm. But I'll put them back in for a while. Yeah, they'll, they'll be fine there. Unlike these which were hanging lower on the rack so what are you guys up to this morning because i went to bed late early last night not late early which made me meant i got up kind of early today put it on the thing on clay clay is on the handle of it yeah, I'll just start, I'm sure I'm not worried about it. I'll just rinse it off with a baby wipe. But I'll let them sit in there for another half hour. No big deal. So what are you doing? Are you making stuff today, Kim? But these came out good aside from that one that I need to sand a little bit. So I think it's just surface right there and there. Two spots on these two got a little burnt. <laughs> but that's because of how I had them hanging, I think. Because they were hanging and probably too close to where the thing was. A lot of momentum and can get chores done yeah is this one of those days you're getting stuff done um i need a place to put these oh let me get this little jar one of these little dads here nice so you're getting stuff done well, that's good. I'm, not, I'm getting 
getting stuff done as far as doing this because all it did was rain in the past couple of days and I have stuff I need to ship out, but I can't sit them outside because of the stupid rain. And I'm just like, oh, I've been trying <laughs> to wait for the rain to stop and I think it's supposed to be fine tomorrow. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to finally get everything shipped out. But otherwise I have to go by the stupid weather and it sucks the past couple of days. You're forcing yourself. Well, that's, that's good. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you just got to fake it till you make it. <laughs> Hi, Mary Jane, Mary Ellen, Mary Sue. <laughs> um, stick that over there. What I wanted to do was, um, I was going to make some clay tiles because I haven't done that in a really long time. And it's all Diana's fault because she shared a picture of her tiles and they were pretty. And I, I made tiles a long time ago. Um, mostly I would make them for like pendants and stuff like that. But I haven't made any in probably, I don't know, eight or so years. So... I'm going to, I ha, and I have some texture stuff that I had bought since then, like in the hopes of using it and not getting to it. So I have some texture things to make some tiles with. And of course I have stamps and stuff. What, is the, what am I missing? Well, it couldn't have gone far because they were right here. Is that it? This might be the only one left. Yeah, okay these over there in case I need them and um I wish I could I had the balls to take my my good rolling pin that has those divider the th um, the spacer things on them which is in my kitchen and use it for tile for rolling out clay but I don't have the I'm like not that I'm you know I could get another one they're not that expensive I could get another one to use for food and use that one for clay but because I know I'm not going to roll anything with it food wise for quite a long time but in my head I'm like but what if I do and then I'm going to be pissed that I used it and blah, 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 so because it, it, it makes sure that you roll things out perfectly even and I know I you know I've used the popsicle stick method in the past which is fine, but so I'll probably do that again. Let me get rid of that because I don't need that right now. So I'll try the popsicle sticks and if they get on my nerves and I'll maybe I'll suck it up and go get my rolly pin. <laughs> I haven't done it in a long time and I can't remember if it aggravated me enough to want to go and use my good rolling pin or not. You've done tiles before, right, Kim? Uh, let me grab my thing, my little texture things over here. Hold on a second. Over here. I have my texture rolling pins. My texture plate things I think are in my drawer over here because I also use them for um, I use them for you know like mixed media and stuff. But these are these little rolling things. I, I used to sell them in my store and they have little patterns on them and you can get texture if you roll the clay out. You know roll it onto the clay. And then I have one that's plain that I can use to roll clay out. But I do like my bigger thing to roll clay with. 
Then I have these, which I've never used. They're like little silk screens, and you're supposed to use them, I think, with the liquid clay, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're Sculpey Nature Silk Screens. I forget. So I got them a long time ago. A really long time ago. Um, what's this? 2019. I got them in 2019. I don't remember getting them 2019. I thought it was earlier than that. But maybe I did. Uh, use your favorite paint colors to embellish your clay. Oh, okay. You, you paint with these. Okay. I thought you used it with the liquid clay. But you can paint. Use paint through these. Oh, that's why I got these. I probably got them not necessarily to use with clay. But maybe to use on other things. Now they're going to bark. Of course. Huh. So this one is feathers and this one is some other pattern. But they don't necessarily need to be used today. I'm more concerned with these thingies just to make some generic tiles with them. Uh, where is my white? I wish I had black clay, but I don't have black clay. I don't think I have any black clay. I looked in my drawer. I don't know if I looked very well, but... Oh, really? You, you do tiles? That's all you do usually? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Duh. I've seen your tiles. I'm an idiot. I get you confused with between you and Diana and somebody else that was doing them. I couldn't remember who I, I, I couldn't remember who it was that, you know, who does what. But I know I knew Diana did them and I forgot that you had showed me the ones you did. Yeah, those rolling these rolling pins are fun to play with. Oh, where are my pop what do you use to, to roll out your clay? Do you have a special rolling pin or do you use the popsicle stick method? Which I don't even know if I have popsicle sticks in here that are long. Like I used to put I used to have some that were glued together to make like a thing. Now that's long been gone. So I need like Yeah, I don't think I have regular popsicle sticks in here. I have these short ones which aren't gonna do me no good. I have that one, which is not exactly the same thickness as that one. That's not going to be helpful. Here's another one. If I can just find four, I can at least have a start, even though I'd, I'd rather have make them longer. Oh, you used a pasta machine. I have a pasta machine, but I don't want to dig it out. at the pasta machine is that's too much work for me today ha, down four good i'll do my best to work with this and then if it tends to be a pain in the ass i'll go grab my rolling pin from the kitchen and just say screw it but this one usually i like to find nice straight ones and these aren't the greatest but It'll do. I'm just going to tape them together. Because I like them to be like two popsicle sticks thin if I'm doing tiles. Hi, Tina. Oh, you have your pasta machine attached to your coffee table? Oh, that's a good idea. What are you working on today, Tina? Okay, 
then I'll have to do the job for now. It's just going to have to be what it is. I use my old plastic thing in the bobber. Well, actually, I'll just kind of get it started. I hate, I hate doing this, though. I suck at rolling things out evenly. But I, if I don't do that, I'll roll them out too thin. And so I have to do the sticks or something. Yeah, it's fine. It does the job. It does the job. And, and I don't like my tiles too thin. Except for when I fly all over the place. I'm just doing a couple, I'm just doing a small patch of it here. So it's about an eighth of an inch, I guess, approximately. Hold on a second, guys. Okay. So that's how thick I have it. About not a quarter inch, but if wood got a new poodle if wood got a new poodle <laughs> oh you mean you mean if i would were to get a new poodle any any choice um it doesn't really matter but i guess either an apricot or another white one i don't know it doesn't really matter too much to me um why are you getting a poodle my back do i bone on bone yeah pretty much i was born with a weird anomaly that in at least one of my vertebrae i had like no cartilage at all so <laughs> that started the whole problem um and i have several you know i have i've had several herniated discs and and i also have something I have a connective tissue disorder that I was born with, which makes everything that much worse, which is why I answered a lot of questions when we found that out. Thinking about a standard. Oh, cool. Um, my dogs are going crazy because he's going to feed them. And of course, they're just being mouthy clay is very dirty looking but i'll probably end up painting any of the white clay i do or using powders of some sort so that won't show um cortisone no i get um i get steroid injections actually it's a synthetic steroid co called depomedrol and that does help yeah well, that'll be cool if you get a standard it's awesome. Just keep in mind that they are very, very energetic. And so as energetic as they are when they're little, they're just as energetic in the bigger form too. So, <laughs> so they're going to be very, very hyper, but very big. But they're also so smart and so, you know, just such beautiful dogs that yeah, once they get out of their puppyhood, it's great. <laughs> Oh, good lord. Let's see. It's hard to see. I can't remember what pattern's which. I think I like that one. That one. I haven't done these in a long time. I'll pick it up even though I probably shouldn't, but so you can see. I put like that swirly wave pattern in there. I don't know if you can see it. And if, I'm going to try it again on the other side and see which side. I, well, I'm, it's going to mess up that side, but I got to do. I want to do it again because I didn't. There's a section that I didn't get enough pressure on.
which of course when you do this it's going to roll it out a little bit so it's going to lose its a little bit of that thickness which is why that's better because then i can cut a few tiles out of that it's feeding time at the zoo so you're going to hear them for a minute so i'm just going to cut off that area because i don't like it over there as much maybe i'll do like that and and I'll just do four square tiles at first. No, you know what? Mm -mm. Let's do this. Can I move one of you guys without being a problem? Thank you. I think I'll do this one. I'll do some smaller tiles do like a small one now that i messed it up let's leave that one the way it is and then we'll cut this one directly in half okay so i got these four tiles like that and i'm going to stick them up here now Gonna stick them up there. You sent pictures. Are oh, you you're you're getting you already got it picked out and stuff. Ooh, is that the parents? The first picture. Looks like the the one in the back of the first one. There's like the one in the front and then the one in the background a little bit. The one in the background looks just like willow, but a bigger. <laughs> Aww. So it's like a cream color. So cute. Oh, so cute. I love it. She's so cute. Is it a she? Is it a he? Work on a piece of paper. Why? What does that do? Oh, you mean because it's easier to move it? Think of that. I'm all right right now. I'm just doing small pieces. Small bits of clay. Until my hands get tired anyway. What's that other stuff? But yeah. I need to probably work this a little bit. Oh, to turn it without distortion. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. It doesn't get stuck on the paper. I guess I just, no, I don't want you to shut up. I want you to, if you have any tips, always let me know. I may not always do them if I'm just being lazy, but I like to know all the things because I don't use clay all that often. I have minimal, I've done minimal clay things over the years, just here and there. I don't know a lot of tricks. I mean, I don't do all the stuff like Janie does with the making, making specific, like, you know, shapes and stuff like that that i don't think i'd ever be interested in doing just because it seems like a hell of a lot of work <laughs> it's too much work for me um, i do want to soften up this one this this color here this is the, i like this dark pink one if so i can make some <laughs> i don't feel like getting my pasta machine out this is going to be fun because this is <laughs> this one's hard I did it the other day and it was like, oh, I had to add some Vaseline to it to get it to, oh, it doesn't stick. Oh, good. Then I'll try that. That's weird. I would think it would stick. 
All right, let's try mashing this down. I have to do what I did the other day. Because I'm going to have to soften it a bit because it's a little bit crumbly, but I was able to soften it fine with some Vaseline. Where's my Vaseline at? Where'd it go? I'll just start sticking some of it on there, mushing it down in there, mushing it, mush. You do best with abstract. What do you mean? Well, you could come on the live stream and tell me some things. I can't wait till Diana gets her camera finished because she does all kinds of stuff too with clay. And when it comes to the tiles and stuff to make for the mosaics, she, you guys probably have more ideas than I do to, to do patterns on them and stuff. Cause I didn't, haven't done them for mosaics before. And I don't know if I'm going to make these for mosaics necessarily, but I want, I like all the ideas that you guys do with the, different stuff because I've not done all that <laughs> there we go it's getting flatter oh I see oh I see what you're saying so like when it gets like weirdly crooked crookedy <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I have a habit of just like grabbing them and picking them up like an idiot and then sitting there going, well, now it's, you know, the sides are sticking out wonky. But I'll just sit there and take this and go and push them and or take something flat and sit there and push them and do that. But yeah, I see what you mean. It's, yeah, it's annoying. I see that. I know that's annoying because I've done it before. What was I using the other day? Was I using this? Yeah, I think I was. Flip it over. I thought I had something else I was using to kind of flip it onto itself to work that in. Yeah, you guys have cool stuff. You you do with clay. I've done pendants. That's like the I've done tiles before, but I usually would use them for pendants. So basically it's the same thing. It's just, instead of not putting a hole in them, I put a hole in them <laughs> for a pendant or a piece of jewelry or something, because I've done that. But yeah, as far as the doing them for actual, like making a mosaic, I have not, I should have done that. I should have folded it over first. But I didn't. Miss. Hmm. Your parrot and I are cleaning the kitchen. Oh, yeah, that would be. Yeah, you can. I'll be here, I'm sure, for a while. Does he ever shit on you when you have him on your shoulder and stuff? <laughs> or will he? Does he know enough to go back to his cage before he before he does that? My bird used to crap on me, but he was a cockatiel. He, his poops were little. Carrots have a little bit bigger poop. Tina, did you do you have a name for the puppy yet? Did she say it was a girl or a boy? I didn't see her say. She sent me pictures of oh, maybe she left after that. I want I had questions. Uh-oh, I see a hair. And it's probably my hair because I just put it up and I probably had whenever I put my hair up in a ponytail, 
little my little sh my little uh, sh uh what do you call it shedding pieces come off and yeah this piece of my hair is it gone now yeah i think i got it well it'll just add more texture to it to the clay oh you got a phone call oh gotcha I was wanting to know if it was a boy or a girl that you were getting and, and if you came up with a name for her or him. for baby wipes because I'm just about out and and uh I'm gonna need them I forgot to have them get some the last time he went to the store I keep forgetting it's easier to do this if I use the handles to put pressure on it Hi Riri, how are you doing? What to create? What am I creating? Oh God, I'm creating a mess. What I'm doing? I might not do that. Oh, that should be the last of it. Oh, you sent me pictures of the uh, one family. Uh, oh wait, you sent? Yeah, I saw the pictures. You must have taken your phone call right after that. I saw the pictures. They're really cute. Um, I saw the white two poodles and then i saw a bunch of puppy pictures were the puppy pictures different puppies or were they like is that what you're choosing from i thought i thought the one puppy was maybe the one you were getting or something be able to use my hands now yeah it's nice and still stiff but not not like it was at least it's better Oh, they're different pools. Gotcha. Okay. The mess is half the fun. Yeah, the mess is half the fun unless you're making a mess and sticky because of the. Oh, look, my hands are getting pink. Well, that's nice. So are you gonna are you definitely picking one of those puppies? So the white wait, wait, so those two white poodles made the made those kind of cream color poodles. So that means that they're gonna be just like Willow. Willow was her parents were cream colored and Willow came out or well no. No, her parents were white. And supposedly when she was a puppy, she was kind of like cream colored. I guess she was a little bit, but she was she's pure white now. So those puppies are probably gonna end up pure white. If both the parents are pure white. Because that's why, like, when we got Willow and that one, and the one parent puppy, the one, or dog, the standard poodles in the first picture you sent, the one in the back, behind, kind of sort of behind the other one, the one in the back looks just like Willow. <laughs> so funny. Mom has a brown nose and the dad has a black nose. Huh. Yeah, the, um, a 
willow has um she has a black nose with like a little i think there was like a brown kind of almost spot on it but i don't think you could see it anymore when she was little you were able, i was able to see it but i don't think you could really see it anymore i think her nose is just black now two boys one has brown nose and one has black nose. the girl is the last one that's brown nose oh, okay Now, is this like somebody that you're buying them off of? Like it's a breeder that you know of? I'm curious to how much the puppies are, how much they sell them for. Because I know they go for oh, a lot of money. All right. I want to take some white and pink and make tiles with the pink and white. So now I'm getting pink on the white, whether I like it or not, because my hands have pink on it. Smooth move, Ixlex. Only 500? Oh, shit. Do they have some, uh, toy poodles or miniatures for that much? Jesus, I'll take one. 500 bucks? That's a really good price, Tina. Take that while you can, because I'm, I promise you now, they're like two, $3,000 most of the time. <laughs> I'd get a standard if it wasn't for the fact that I already had such small ones, and I don't want to mix the small and the big, because a lot of times the standard, you know, wants to play with the, the, the littler ones, and they can get hurt. So I don't want to do that. But if, <laughs> if I could find a $500 toy poodle... I'd jump on that in a heartbeat. Yeah, you could pay more for it, but you don't need the AKC registration. It's not, you know, it's not important. I mean, if you're getting it as a pet, you know, if, if you were getting it to breed or something, that might be important. But if you're getting it as a pet, then. But it shouldn't be that much more. Oh, okay. Because uh, when I got Willow, they said that the AK the registration was like it was like an extra twenty five bucks, I think. But it's not necessary, you know. It's something that you can, you know, don't really need it unless you're, unless you do. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't need it unless you do need it, type of thing. Let's see anywhere I see that a little bit of pink that got rubbed off on here. Okay, I picked it up. And I'll probably use more than that. I'll probably start out with half and do like a half and half swirl. I just put them together and Just start swirling them. I just like to make a swirly pattern with it. I don't do all the caning. I can't, I couldn't do that. I don't have the ability or the patience to do that kind of thing. <laughs> I'd go insane. It's too much work. Plus, I it's it's not easy to do. I've watched videos and stuff and and seen how these women do all that caning and stuff, and that's like that's some crazy talent there. Yeah, I get a nice swirly pattern. And then just, and then just roll it out. Now, 
No, I, I mean, well, I did make beads. I have some beads that are still cooking in the oven. But now I'm just making some pattern. I'm just going to put some uh, texture and make some tiles out of it. And then might go over it with like, go over the texture with like, um, I might roll this a little bit more like that. It's a little bit smaller. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Which one did I do on the other one? I did that wave one. this swirly thing here. Oh, that looks pretty. See, then I could take a little gold and go over it or something on the raised parts. Coning? What? What's coning? You need the expensive clay for... Yeah. Oh, caning. Oh, caning. I read that completely wrong. Hello. I read it as coning instead of caning. <laughs> I'm like, what's coning? I couldn't see the chat. Mm, let's see. I can't really hear you. Are you there? Oh, she popped out. She left. She was here and then she's gone. That's not very straight, so we're going to fix it. There we go. I'll make four tiles out of this one. All right, you get up there. There she is. She back. Yeah, I can hear double. Um, what? I could hear double and triple of everything you were saying. And, <laughs> hmm, something isn't right. So I went out and came back in. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of weird. No, I don't hear it, but boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, cleaning. I I buy different kinds of clay. Like, did you know Arch has a mixed polymer clay? Yeah. Okay, I didn't until like last week. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So I bought some, and it's okay, but it's not good for painting. As you, if you can see, it's kind of oily looking. Right. It's kind of on the soft side, and soft. Yeah. They're not good for um caning. Oh, so that's you good know, to know. Like Sculpey Primo, and you know. Yeah. Stuff like that to get nice sharp connection connective edges hmm. but I've been I tried this last night um I'm trying to make a puffy heart oh cool make a seed heart. but I um, um this is the first time I've ever done it so I'm trying you say it. Puffy heart so is it solid in the center or is it I see so it, oh I gotcha oh cool yeah how do you do that I just I have a heart cutter and I just laid a sheet of clay on it. All right. And very gently just kind of work it down. Really huh. gently. And this will, it's not done, but this will give you the idea. Then turn it over and I just give it a push. Cause oh. it's deep. And I then. See. Then you have like extra slack in it to kind of puff it up. Yeah. yeah. And then bake it and it'll be a puffy heart. This oh, came out cool. work it enough, but that's how you do it. That's cool. Got these. 
But it turns out my mold was different on one side than on the other. So when I went to put them together, they didn't match up. So um, if, if I don't know if you can see the tip here. They don't no. match. Oh, okay. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of sanding on them. Yeah. And then I decided, well, I'm going to put them together with a uh, uh, rope of clay. So maybe that little bit right there isn't going to matter because yeah. I'm cutting the seam with the rope of clay, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of where I was when I said, I better get my ass up and get my kitchen clean. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I saw you come on. I'm like, oh, good. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my tiles are all different thicknesses now because I pushed this one further than I did the other ones. And you know what? That, that can be really cool if you're going to put them on a board or something. Um, yeah, different. I'm okay with it. I, I'm not really a perfectionist when it comes to these. I know some people are like really, really perfectionist about the exact precise this, that, and the other. I can really care less. You know, like I don't get all into the everything's got to be perfectly straight and everything's got to be this and that. <laughs> I just kind of go over, you know. I agree with you. Mine aren't. And I hope people don't mind that because they're not going to get that kind of perfection. It's not going to happen. Think, I don't think anybody minds it really. I mean, yeah. I try to make them really grossly out of shape, but no, yeah. I mean, I'm not making them crazy, like you know, different out the top, sitting on top of the oven. But I mean, obviously, they're not going to be perfect. But I'm okay. I'm okay with it. So, right over here because that's hot over there. That too. I didn't realize it was going to get that hot. Latina, as far as potty training, poodles are really easy to potty train. The only, you know, like, but as with any dog, be very, very consistent. So you can't like, you know, you have to be extremely consistent. But the trick that I use to potty train, all my dogs were potty trained within like a month. Um, the only exception to that is Winnie and Willow. And they're, they're housebroken, but they're pee pad trained. So they have their own little area that they go, kind of like you would have like a cat litter box, but instead... You know, because they don't lift their legs because they're not boys, it makes it a lot easier. But they have a little area they go to that has two pee pads that are next to each other. And they never, ever go anywhere but their pee pads. And the only reason that happened is because how I train my dogs to go to the bathroom is all my poodles. I've had eight, eight poodles, I think, over the years. Starting and, and only two of them were older when I got them and, and were already house trained. So all the rest of them, all the other six, I guess it was, were all puppies that I got. Um, and what I would do is, what, the second I brought them home, I would set a timer. Now, puppies have the smallest bladder in the world. So, like, they need to go outside, like, every 15, 20 minutes to pee. Because oh, that's what they'll pee. And a lot of people don't realize that. And so that's why they have a hard time getting them house trained. Because in order for, like a puppy can't hold it very long they're unable to hold it so you know they don't know any better to hold it so they're not going to they're just going to squat when they feel like it you know or whatever usually puppies squat if they're a boy or doesn't matter boy or girl but um so what i would do is i set a kitchen timer and i know it's a pain in the ass but you only have to do this for you know you know it gets like over a period of about a month and it and it works out really well but i had set it for every like let's say 15 or 20 minutes depending on how i see they were kind of you know holding it or not holding it but and i would when the alarm would go off i immediately got up took them outside and stood outside until they peed because i knew they had to at some point so i would stand out there until they peed and they pay and they will within a couple of minutes they'll squat you just got to watch for it because puppies are so low to the ground to begin with it's hard to tell sometimes that they're squatting on the grass so it's easier if the grass is kind of short or wherever you're taking them out, like it's somewhere you could see really well. And if you, if you, if it's nighttime, then you want to make sure it's a well lit area so you can watch for them to squat. And when they squat and pee, you give them tons of praise. Maybe have a cookie in your pocket. You can give them a little tiny bit of a treat and you give them tons. Oh, good girl. Good potty or whatever. If it's a girl, let's say good potty, good girl, potty, potty, good girl. But as they're pottying, also say if you see them squatting say the word potty 
as they're squatting and peeing. Potty, potty, good potty, potty. That's what I do. Because they'll associate that word with peeing or pottying. Or if it's poop, I say potty, potty. Either one, potty, potty is interchangeable. And, or I'll say poopy, potty, poopy, potty when they're going poop. And typically the peeing is the, is the worst part that you want to get under control. So then every 15 minutes, you know, you have to let them out consistently every 15 or 20 minutes or whatever. After about a week of that, you can move it up to about 30, 35 minutes. And so you, every week you move it until you're at like an hour and a half, two hours. And so it'll take about a month. But then after about a month, they start to associate the alarm going off with immediately going outside. So then they wait until that alarm goes off to go to the bathroom because they know that going to the bathroom outside, they get praises, they get they get treats, they get all the things. So when they hear that bell, they start to get excited to go outside to do their potty so they can get their treat and their praises. So that's how I always potty train my dogs and it works like a charm. Now, of course, do they have accidents? Sure. But I, and I, I would use pee pads for that reason. Uh, I would have pee pads down and if they peed anywhere, you know, like on the pee pads, inside i wouldn't give them any kind of praise at all and in fact i would sometimes bring the pot pee pad outside and lay it in the grass immediately after they peed on it and and, and pet them and say good girl potty like outside to kind of give them the praise outside so that they knew that they you really want them to go outside and after a while they pick up on this and believe me, it works like a charm. And you just have to be super consistent because if you get lazy with it, it's going to throw them off. And if you're not, and if they ever pee off the pee pad and they just pee on the floor, you, it sucks, but you have to scream at them. You have to make it known that you don't like that. You have to go, no, bad girl. You don't have to hit them or anything like that. You just go, sometimes you can grab them by the scruff of the neck because that's what their mom does. You're not doing it to hurt them. You're doing it to get their attention. You can grab them by the scuff of the neck and go, no, bad girl. And that's all you got to do. And then bring them outside immediately and pet them when they get to the grass and say, good girl, good potty. And then stand there for a minute, let them wander to know that that's where they should go potty. It's, it's a process, but it works really, really well. And it's worked with every one of my dogs. The only time it didn't work, not that it didn't work, it was my fault. But with Winnie and Willow, I got them in the spring and in, in, uh, Tennessee is the sixth rainiest state in the country. It rains here, in the, especially in the spring. It's insane. And so I found myself with two white, tiny poodles out in the rain, which my yard is like partially mud. And I would be standing out there every 15 minutes in the rain with these dogs. And since I had two puppies at one time, they wanted to run around in the mud and play with each other. And which is fine if it's not raining. I would normally just stand there and let them do this until eventually they would pee. But they, it was just pouring. The year that I got them, I think it was 2017, it was ridiculous nonstop rain every day. And so the one day, you know, like I'd be out there for a half an hour with an umbrella with two soaking wet dogs trying to get them to pee. And they didn't want to be out there in the rain or they'd run around if it was wet. If it wasn't like completely raining, they'd just run around. Hi, Janie. So I, you know, it, after about a month of this where it would rain, they didn't want to be out there after, if it was like raining, raining. So it was hard to get them to go outside because it would be so pouring down rain. And they were going on their pee pads consistently. And so after about a month and a half, I said, you know what? Screw it. I give up on this right now. The weather is just terrible. I can't find a single area where they're not out there getting soaking wet. I was having to give them a bath every day because they're white and it was just not going to happen. So the worst time to get a puppy is if you're live in the rainy areas and it's springtime, Ugh, that was the worst. So I, I, so that's why they ended up being pee pad trained. So now they're pee pad trained. And the only time they go outside is if they go outside just for me to take them out and play or whatever, but they don't, you know, they will go out and they'll pee outside, but they don't go consistently enough. And I'm not going to bother because it's actually easier with them to keep them inside and let them pee because they don't get dirty. They don't get fleas. They don't get nothing. And they're perfectly happy and they're small enough where they don't need to be outside to, to run around. They get plenty of exercise running around the house. Well, you are a hundred percent right in everything you said. I totally agree with everything you said as far as training goes. Yeah. Cause you gotta be consistent with puppies. That's the thing. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. 
I'm uh, hey, I'm just playing like um trying to get the a technique down or something, you know. Yeah. See how it may work or it might not work. I don't know. So um, I figured if I just well, that's good because that's a good way to make like a lightweight but large clay pendant where it's not going to be super heavy or something or you know or any kind of thing like that. Yeah, it's not going to be heavy. That's for sure. And then I have a little eye hook. Um, that I'm going to put in the orange clay before I bake it. That way it won't come out. Yeah. Do you have and your then, headset in, Janie? Are you able to hear us? Hi, Janie. I figured I, I I messaged you because I figured you were at the at um at the doctor. Look, Janie, I made tiles. I made them and I put the texture rollers on there. It's all Diana's fault. I think I could take these out of the oven now. They've been in there for another 40, actually 47 minutes. So I think they're fine. Yeah, I think they're done. They're done. My little you corn starch. You said goldfish. Did you see what I made? I'll put them up there. I'm cool. Let me see. I'll move them back a little bit more. Back towards you. There you go. Oh, cute. They're like little goldfish crackers. <laughs> Those are so cute. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw the um, mermaid tails. That I, I did. saw them when you were doing them, but I didn't see them finished. Oh, they look good, too. I like them. Those are cute. Thanks. So thanks to you, I made uh, goldfish. <laughs> Those are cute. I like the goldfish crackers. <laughs> I put little jam eyes in them because they didn't look right with just the doll. I know that's how the goldfish crackers are, but they didn't look right. So uh, yeah. I I had to put a gem in them. Yeah, that's a cute idea. I don't like to do anything in clay without putting something in it. I I don't know. I love to put things in clay. Gail, your CT scans in a couple hours? You'll have to let us know how it goes. Well, you won't know anything today, probably anyway. That's the most annoying thing is not knowing anything the day of. Okay. Let's see. I want to do some blue and white. Who's that whistling? Echo. Oh, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. He was, he was saying hello, hello. Nobody answered, so he was just. Besides, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to whistle. Thinker, he says, Come on, John. <laughs> My husband, that's what he just said. Come on, John. <laughs> you have goldfish, Janie? He's not even here. Goldfish crackers or goldfish clay? Yeah, I've got to send out packages today. I mean, they won't go out today. I'll pack them up. They'll go out tomorrow. But I have to do that. I've had stuff sitting here waiting to go out for three days now but the stupid weather is not most of the day, but i was at the hospital a good day yesterday you're at the and, hospital well my husband went in um sunday monday morning sunday he was um not breathing That's very cool. well. yeah I don't you're telling us about it yeah so how's yeah. he doing well he went back to work today so he's okay. on yeah they gave me shitload of steroids of IIV in the hospital and then he has a prescription for steroids for 10 days um, to continue and his breathing is back to normal now. I noticed like when he's in bed he breathes so heavy that the bed shakes with each breath. Wow. He's not like going, Ugh. he's not making noise, not that. Right. It's, it's 
stomach pulling in to breathe deep enough. Uh, it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. Um, but anyway, I was I was at the hospital uh, until about almost one o'clock yesterday getting him, right. and then the day before I was at the hospital because we went in at eight in the morning and was there. I think I got home at like about four o'clock. Um, so I didn't do any housework, I guess is my whole point. So today I had to get it, you know, get caught up on stuff because when I got home yesterday, I just wasn't, I, I didn't have anything left. I was right. worn out. But yeah, he's back at work. Um, what about his, his colonoscopy? Are they, or was it, what was it? Colonoscopy? Yeah, it was the prostate surgery. They, oh, the it was. Supposed to be today, and they canceled it. So mm -hmm. he's going to do it with um breathing issues. They have to put him under. Yeah. Okay. So they didn't reschedule it yet. Then. No, they didn't. He he has a doctor's appointment Monday, so um. Okay. He'll do all that, and he has a checkup on Monday. But he goes through this sometimes. But it, I mean, it's never not scary you know right of course yeah it always scares me now this time he allowed me to take him to the hospital before it got to where he couldn't even stand up and he finally let me um call an ambulance right he didn't call an ambulance this time he let me he called off work and he went to the hospital. so um it's getting easier for me <laughs> yeah yeah because it's hard to fight somebody that you know they need to get, you know, come on. You've been like this for three days. You can't move because you can't breathe. When are you going to let me call the ambulance, you know? Right. It just gets tedious. And I know he doesn't want to go. So I worried about him being uncomfortable in the hospital that he didn't want to be in. And, and I don't know. I do it to yeah. myself. But, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna go through this in the oven real quick. Okay. Um and then I don't know. I guess I could put stuff on it. I could decorate it a little bit. Never mind. I could do some things on it, some scroll work or something. I don't yeah. have to do some plain. So these are the beads I took out of the oven to just clean up. Stacy. Huh? What are you having for supper tonight? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I never know until I get hungry. Yeah, see, I, I've got to figure out something for dinner. I don't know what. The only thing I noticed with the cornstarch is the area where it laid in the cornstarch, mm -hmm. it cracked to the bead a little bit. You're kidding. Uh-uh. Wow. Show up. It's it like it, there's like little crumbly cracks in it, and that's where it was laying in the cornstarch. Mm -hmm. Why would your clay crack? I don't know. Let's see if this one did the same thing where it was laying. The reason for the cracks is it due to moisture. But the cornstarch was laying out. Right. But maybe it dried it out too much too fast. Yeah, because it cracked on all of them, it looked like. That sucks. I'm going to sand it and see if I can fix it. And once I put resin over top of it, I think it'll be fine. It's not like cracked where it's going to like fall apart. It's just got these little hairline cracks. But I think it should be fine once I sand it. Uh, I'm going to do some research on that. I haven't had that happen, but... Um... I haven't made a ton of things either, and anything, any beads that I make are are little, uh -huh. not not big like yours. Yours are chunky. Yeah, I mean. that's, see, this one I don't think cracked, and this one's a lot smaller than that one, so maybe it's the size of the bead. It that could be that. That, that happen. Yeah. So if I do any big ones, I shouldn't put them in the cornstarch. I should just kind of let them sit. If you if you can do if you could do your big ones on your rod and then the smaller one, 
Yeah, I can't. I don't think I can do the big one. Well, I can do the big ones on the rod if I make a little contraption that'll work to hold them up a little better. But, but yeah, it's weird how that happened. Huh. Yeah, I can't ever remember having that happen. I certainly wouldn't have told you to do it if I'd have. Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I'll because I'll sand it and put stuff on it. It'll be fine. Okay. If you put resin on it, you won't notice that. No, I know. That's why I'm like, I'm not worried about it. But I think about it. Yeah. I'll just Maybe. give it. I'm going I'm to sand them a little bit anyway. Uh -huh. um, so that'll take off any, probably any of that, a lot of that, whatever. Remember the picture I made on my earrings? It didn't show when I put resin on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it won't show. It'll fill it in. It's hmm. cool. They came out cool, though, other than that. I like them. I can also happen if the outside bakes faster than the inside. Oh, okay. That could be. That could have been re the reason, too, is because the outside was bigger than the, you know, the outside, you know, being so much bigger. So that could be the reason, too. So maybe if I wrap them with foil or something, I don't know, or put them in like a little foil box or make a little thing out of foil to put them in. It'll maybe keep, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing about nothing. So, but it's fine by me. I don't really care. It'll be fine. They're not like cracked all the way through. It's just the very surface. So if I take a little sandpaper, I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay, I could stick these tiles in if I need to. Actually, I could fit more on there and do that first. Maybe I'll stamp some of these. I'll do the blue and white swirl and then stamp them. Oh, we need too much cornstarch. <laughs> Should I show you what I did? <laughs> Is that too much? I probably did put too much. I didn't know how much to use. So I'm like, I just pour a pile on there. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Let me look for a stamp. Let's see. What do I want to do? The blue ones. And I'm just find a stamp to the stamp of some of these. Ooh, it would be cute to do these little cactuses. I'm going to do some of those. And I can fill those in with some color or paint or something. I'll do those with the white. I think I need more white. A little bit more white. I'll make So you're at the you're at the doctor's office with with um, Noreen, and you guys going to lunch or anything, Janie? Oh, bye, Gail. Bye, Pretty Gail. Everything. I hope everything comes out okay. We will put it out into the universe that everything comes back normal. Good vibes. Good thoughts. Mm -hmm. Can you tell that technician not to flirt with you? Because, you know, they're going to want to. <laughs> Pretty ladies come in there and they're just going to want to flirt with you. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's a guy, it might be a girl. Well, it might she, she might flirt with you anyway. <laughs> Who knows? Anything goes anymore. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I think I need more blue. I, but I don't have, oh, that's right. That was the last of the blue. Well, great. Great. That's okay. I thought I put, I did put more blue than white, but for some reason I forget that white takes over. It does. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. Looks like planet Earth. <laughs> You got the ortho doctor now? Okay, now I'm going to go put it in and let it bake. Okay. So now I'm going to... I learned a lot doing it. I have a little thinner than the other ones. Popsicle sticks. So I'm just gonna eyeball it gently. Make it thinner. All right. We're gonna. Uh oh. Why am I missing a stamp? Where is it? No, no, no. I'll be here. Oh, come on. I like that one too. It fell off the damn card. I swear, if the people holding me, what'd you say? I said, I swear, every piece of clothing I own needed washed. Oh, really? I want to everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hard. The weather's been changing, and you know, yeah. it's been really high, and then my energy levels have been really low when I do have a better day because yeah. I'm exhausted and you know time just gets away from me. Yeah, I do my laundry. My husband does his, um, and, it, and it's painful to carry that clothes basket down to the laundry, and it's painful to fold. I mean, everything hurts. You know, right. it hurts. Yeah. All and there are days I just don't have it in me, and I had a lot of them this season. Yeah. This spring was just rough for me. Yeah, that's that's the worst part is when you know you got things that have to get done, but you don't feel well enough to get them done. Yep. And, and it's that invisible illness that people yep. don't see. Right. So you have people that think you should be doing things and get upset when they think you're just being lazy, you know? Right. And I, I deal with that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. I think if I had to more support, I would feel better emotionally, which in turn would make me feel better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have the same thing going on here because, like, Chris thinks that, you know, 
he doesn't take, he has no compassion for, you know, the fact that I can't do the things that I used to be able to do. Cause he's known me when I could do all these things, you know? So yeah. the fact that I can't, it's like, and I ask for his help. He's like, you know, aggravated. And it's like, and, I, and I'm just like, well, I'm so sorry that, you know, I grew old and decrepit and you didn't. Yeah, exactly. I'm so sorry yeah. that body gave out and yours didn't. Exactly. Right. My thoughts well, we're, we're to you, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he doesn't say anything. It's right. just I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris doesn't come out and directly say it. He just you know doesn't you could just tell when somebody doesn't have any compassion for what's going on that's it tell that he thinks i should have they act. and didn't and that kind of thing mm -hmm. he never says anything that i can and, and that might be worse <laughs> right it is because then they think that you know they well i didn't you know i know I, blah, blah, blah. like they, they act like they give a crap and they'll say the things like that but in all reality they don't they don't act like they give a shit Right. And actions speak louder than words. So you can't go around acting like, you know, acting like an ass. And then when you say things like, but, but I care. And it's like, well, you don't act like you care, but I do care. See, I said it, you know, like that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And, and I get that same thing. And well, I never said anything. Right. No, you don't have to. You, have to. you don't have to. Your, your attitude and your, you know, that all speaks volumes. I see him look. You know, and th and that just drives me crazy. I mean, he's a yeah. good guy. Don't get me wrong. It's just right. this thing we 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 don't see eye to eye on is my illness because he doesn't. He can't. He can't put himself in that place. You know, right. right? But I'll see him look like to see if I cleaned up my craft stuff or to see if right. I cleaned right. the area today or you know. He won't say anything, but I see those eyes. He'll just he'll right. look, you know. Mm -hmm. Enough oh. me in a tailspin because I feel bad. Right, which you shouldn't have to feel bad. No, I shouldn't it's have ridiculous to. to to think to think you have to feel bad for that for for not feeling well that you can't help. Right. <laughs> why Why should I feel bad? Right. I mean, I don't like like when my kitchen isn't cleaned until right. one o'clock. They act like it's just you being lazy, like you're just wanting to be, you know. But it's like, okay, think about it. How you've known me? How long was I ever lazy? No. So obviously, this isn't, you know, it's not just going to start being lazy just for the sake of being lazy, just because all of a sudden now I don't want to care about something. Yeah. You know, like, like, <laughs> what did they think happened? You know, I, I, I don't get what. Well, I say they because you're kind of saying the same thing that right. you're going through with mine. Um, I don't understand, like, what he thinks. I all of a sudden decided I don't want to keep my house immaculate. I all of a sudden don't want to shower twice a day. I all of a sudden don't want to, you know, it hasn't right. been all of a sudden. I've been talking to you about it since 2015. Thank you. Right. I'm going to the doctors. I tell you what the doctors say. I show you my new meds. I tell you what they're for. You have been informed every step of the way. Right. So where is your confusion? Yeah. That's that. Why, what is your thinking? Like, why would I quit? Why do you think I'm doing this? Yeah, intentionally the, the unfortunate thing is and, and i hate to say this and i say this because this is how, my situation i don't know yours but chris is very narcissistic and narcissistic people and self-centered people do not have the ability to think outside of themselves so they only think of how they see things and that's it so they are unable to think of how it could be different for somebody else and that everything's not black and white so they're unable to, you know, they're unable to say, oh, well, I feel fine and I haven't changed physically, you know, the way I feel in, in 30 years. So why should she? And that's got to be bullshit. It can't be real because it doesn't happen to me. That's like how their brain functions. Yeah. Instead of realizing that everybody's different and good for you, that you, you know, don't have these issues, but I do and I can't help them, you know, but unfortunately the self-centeredness can't get past their own brain mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
they can't get past their own brain long enough to to realize that not everybody's like you <laughs> you know and i think a lot of that does come from the fact that they've seen us so active and so strong right. i mean sure. we're strong women right all of and a sudden you know, that doesn't and it doesn't mean we're not still strong women it's just we are you know we got things going on that we just can't help <laughs> yeah and that's, you know, and we shouldn't, especially by the somebody who says they care about, you know, I mean, me and Chris aren't together anymore. So if he was like this while we were together, we, we wouldn't have been together. But, you know, like it's, 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 it's not hard. right that they, you know, for them to just expect that we're, we're going to be just fine and never grow old and never have ailments. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not working anymore. Because I'm on disability, I'm not able to sit at a desk and type. Right. I'm, just, I'm not able to anymore. I did it up until the day I lost my shit. And yeah. I called PCP and I said to her, I can't do this not one second more. Yeah. I have seven years with the pain and I, I can't do it anymore. I just can't. And she called me off work that day and I never went back. Yeah. I mean, I, I did it until you know, right, and and that's something that doesn't show either. You know, the strength that it takes to deal with things on a day to day basis. Yeah, that doesn't show. Mm -mm. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Hi, Kristen. She has plastic bags. At least a hundred of them. I nabbed them. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> she grabbed plastic bags for me because she knows I'm always running out of plastic bags. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I think I could put these in. I'm hoping this tile, I know it's going to be just short to fit in there. So I will. Oh, I can make more out of that. Let me do that first before I. I forgot that I can use the little entrails or whatever these are, little bits to make another set of tiles. Yep. Let, let me see the first one you made. I stamped them with ink so I didn't have to worry about putting color in them later, but I can go back and like, this way when they're done, if I want to go in and fill in with like paint and make the cactus a little green and add like something, I could do that too if I feel like it after. But you know what I paint with? I take um that floor wax that you get at the dollar store. Yeah. And mix it with mica powders. And oh yeah, yeah. You can paint with that, and it'll it'll bake right into it. You can yeah. bake it again, and if you don't, it'll it'll dry the lot. So yeah. Yeah, because I can use the mica powders with the, well, that's the same thing as taking a medium, uh, an acrylic medium and, and doing the same thing. You yeah. Can, yeah. <laughs> you can, you heard me, right? The floor wax from the dollar store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, that stuff works good for that. I don't, um, I don't usually have other kinds of stuff on hand, you know? Yeah. Or I wouldn't know if it would work on clay either. Yeah. Oh yeah, it will. Okay. Any kind of acrylic, any kind of acrylic or anything would work. Okay. No, I mean, I, uh, and oh yeah. So acrylic medium is that acrylic also? Yeah, any mediums that are that you use that go like so matte medium, gloss medium. Those aren't meant to be glues. They're they weren't made for being glue. I mean, you can use them as glue, and a lot of people do. They use them as like a decoupage medium or a glue. That's not their purpose, though. Their purpose was actually to to make to use with your paints. So, like if you have like a thick paint and you take a uh, like a um, like if you, and if your paint is like a craft paint or it's like a, um, a a matte colored paint, which most craft paints are, you would use a matte medium to thin out your paint or you know you, so, so or make it more transparent and stuff like that that's the purpose of those mediums so they're mm -hmm. acrylic based so they're basically acrylic paint without the color so okay. you can use those to make new paints with basically so you can make all kinds of jars of paints if you want to if you have a, a um, if you have any kind of mica powders or 
even pigment powders. You can make your own paints. You can use dyes. You can use all kinds of things to make your own paint colors and stuff if you have any kind of medium. Because you said it to where I understand it. I've read about it and never really understood like what it was. Um, yeah. I, it'll say on it, oh, thin your paints. Okay, well. Right. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How, when would I use this? How would I use this? You know, I, right. I, well, that's because most people wouldn't buy that. You wouldn't think to buy that unless you were like an artist, you know what I mean? Like somebody who does canvases and stuff, you learn how to use those mediums. But for people like us who are just crafters, we learn from watching people on YouTube. So if somebody on YouTube says, Oh, use matte medium to glue your stuff down. You're like, okay, now I got to buy matte medium. And then you read the bottle of matte medium. And it's like, wait a minute. It doesn't say to you, you can use this to glue your stuff down. It says to use it with paint. So people get confused. But yep. what it is, is it's a dual purpose type of thing. You can use it as a glue because it does have a glue kind of property to it. But it's, you know, really actually what it's meant for is for, you know, this, that, or the other. And I always say, you know, to me, I don't use matte medium as a glue unless there's certain circumstances I will only because using like white glue and water is going to do the same thing for way cheaper because matte medium is not cheap. It's, it's yeah. an expensive decoupage glue if you're using it for a glue. But there are some there are some reasons it works better sometimes to use that, you know because sometimes it does hold better than like a white glue so if you wanted to use it let's say to hold down a larger piece and you know some people will take the thicker matte medium and use that like I use the 3d matte gloss which is basically just a thick matte medium and I use that and that stuff will hold anything it'll hold metal down it'll hold glass it'll hold anything because it's got somehow it's just a really good you know glue but it's really meant for technically meant for paint but people they've they've actually made it for art our reasons they've actually made a matte medium prima did that isn't for paint now they've made it specifically to use as a you know as a mixed media medium type of thing so it's it gets confusing because people are like wait a minute what you know <laughs> and it, it, it gets very confusing when it comes to that yeah i but like i said the bottle told me nothing you know it, right. it just confused me more um <laughs> Yeah, and, like and I am an artist for sure. So I had no idea what it was for. Yeah, I got a bunch of chain at Creative Reuse, by the way. I got a bunch of ball chain, and I might put oh, some okay. rest in my heart. I I might do some ball chain, but it was um a quarter for. Probably 24 inches here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is an cool. actual price for ball chain. You know, they just had a oh, ton yeah. of money. Because that stuff's super expensive. So, yeah. I got $3 worth, I think it was. Yeah, I have a lot of ball chain that I've gotten from the Creative Reuse over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I love so ball I, chain. I, I grab it every time because I use it in my mixed media projects. I use it in whatever, you know. So, I'm always grabbing, you know, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to grab that because. And I'm going to next time I go. I don't know when I'll. I swear to God, they didn't get anything new in. Oh, I don't really? understand. I mean, I everything I saw there was the same as a year ago. It's hmm. like, except their wooden stamps. I I got like four paper lunch bags full of wooden stamps last time I went, right. and this time I recognized you know all the same stamps that were. Like and and it was like yeah. I got a couple um, packs of old 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 clay. I'll just soak in mineral oil, and they'll soften up and they'll be fine. Um, some ball chain, some jewelry, and you know, like it was disappointing. I was I was really bummed. Hmm. Yeah. I wish I wish people more people had access to the creative releases like I have. I'm I realize oh you know, especially as time has gone by and I've known people that don't have access to it. Um I wish there was more of them, you know. Yeah. I have Me the donation based thing, like, you know. Well, we we managed to spend a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and things are really expensive there. Really oh, expensive. 
uh, like a pack of clay is a dollar fifty. You know, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, like really, this is so old. It's going to take me days to get it to be workable. <laughs> you know, and you're charging a dollar fifty for it. You know, right. Um, just that kind of stuff. You know, their pricing was was is always horrible. It's so expensive. See, that's they, like the, the creator. We have another creator, Reese. That's a you, everything is you purchase purchase separately. It's not donation based. And right. that one used to be good when they were in a different location. Then they moved locations, and I guess because the, maybe the rent was more expensive, they started up in their prices, and it was like it, it just became way too much, you know. And I've gone there and been like, "Damn!" I'm like, "This is crazy how much they're they're charging for right. stuff." Yeah, uh -huh. and I had forgotten that part. Right, and I really expected them to have some new things, and. Right. Their shelves were exactly the same. I, I, I don't know. They do donations by appointment only. So people aren't, you know, donating. Right. right. That, that's going to cause a problem, too, because, you know, people don't, don't have time. Sometimes they just want to get it in the car and get it out of there. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so that's going to cause a problem. If they're cleaning out their craft room on a Saturday afternoon, they don't want crap sitting around until Tuesday or Wednesday at three o'clock, you know, right. so they can go in for an appointment. And it, I don't know. They're, yeah. they're dirty. It's run down. It's not clean. Nothing is clean. Yeah. Um, it's just not a well run place. Yeah. Which is sad because it is donation based. Yeah. And it, I'm sure it's a nonprofit because they usually all are, which means that, you know, they they probably have some sort of charity that the money goes to or something. Or yeah. some sort of cause. They didn't say there wasn't a sign that said that. It did say nonprofit, but yeah. I don't know what their um their cause. So the one by me, the one that the one by me, now I understand that. You know, in order for the one by like the one by me to really thrive, it's because it's in a major city. So as long as, you know, I think that any creative reuse that is going to be near a, a city that has a good amount of people in it, um, I think should run off of the same model. Because I'm telling you, the people that run the creative reuse that I go to is they they have they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? They really know what they're doing and they get a lot of donations to the point where they raise money. And they, they have, they do stuff, not just, they don't just have the creative reuse where they get donations of all the stuff. They also do fundraisers. They do all these things. They're very active in the community. They do all these things to raise money. They raise money. They, they you know, they, they had a goal, I think uh, like a year or so ago to raise a million dollars to build their own building so that they don't have to rent and they can have like a building custom build how they want it or whatever to use for the creative reuse. And they raised, I think they raised that money already. And, you know, they're going to be looking for a location to have their building in Nashville so that they can have their own building. And it's like stuff like that. It's it's because how they have it run. Well, the lady who runs it, she's extremely smart. And she's like, you know, she knows what she's doing. Very nice lady. And, and you know, so it's that's why that that one runs so well and it does so well because mm -hmm. of who's running it. You know, and I think there's a lot of other creative reuses that don't realize that if they would model themselves a little bit more in that direction they would do so much better especially if they're in a major city right you know? yeah I, I don't i didn't even know about creative re it's an hour away but we travel you know to go shopping and to to visit places we, we it's not like we don't go but five miles out of the place where we live you know right an hour for a trip to go do something on a, on a weekend isn't bad at all, you know? Right. Um, I never knew of it. They don't advertise. They don't, huh. you know, unless you live there, you probably don't even know right. that it's there. Yeah. You got up at 6 o'clock this morning, Janie? Good Lord. I, well, you know what? That's about the time I got up, too. So, Because I went to bed early last night, like really early. Well, I was awake at 
three o'clock. I was looking at my phone to see if anybody was online and you know, one of those things. Yeah. I hate that. And then probably about four thirty. So an hour and a half I was awake about four thirty. I fell asleep again until six. Uh -huh. I, I hate when I, you know, I can fall asleep. I just can't stay asleep most times. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I can fall. I, actually, I can't fall asleep. But then when I do fall asleep, I don't stay asleep very long either. So <laughs> I wish I could fall asleep at least. But, I mean, I I do better, you know, as long as I'm really, really tired, I, I'll fall asleep. But if it's mm -hmm. just like, well, it's getting kind of late, I guess I'll go lay down. Like, no. If I'm not like, oh, God, I'm so tired, I have to sleep, then I won't sleep. Really? Yeah, I just don't sleep. So many oh. meds. I, I, I fall asleep before I even realize I was falling asleep. Yeah, that's Chris. I wish I wish I could be like that. See, I've been like this all my life, ever since I was a child. You must be on the same meds then, because I'll tell you what. I mean, I won't even know I fell asleep until I wake up. Where's the gold? Oh, there it is. I'm like looking for the gold. I'm like, dang it. Oh, this was soft. That's right. This was much softer than the... The other one, I can work this one more. I mean, I can work it with this, but I don't need the. In other words, I don't need the. Probably don't need the Vaseline for this one. For the gold, that one wasn't as problematic as the as the other colors were. It seals, but not really glues it. What? I'm gonna grab. What seals but not really glues it? Kristen. What I missed? I missed it. I mean, might need a little bit of Vaseline. It's a little, little, little bit crumbly, but not a lot. So I'll put a little bit. Just to help it soften a little more. Just a little bit. The razor go. Oh, right here. I thought you were helping place in the we will probably come out soon. Okay, Janie. Bye, Janie. What are you up to today, Kristen? Anything? Are you creating today? You can see she made this necklace um, that she's been working on. And she sent me a picture of it. Oh, my gosh. Is it gorgeous? It's a... Ooh. Who made it? Kristen. Oh, okay. What's her, Kristen? What's your, are you are are you friends? Are we friends on Facebook, Kristen? Do I know her on Facebook? I can't remember. I don't think so. I have a Kristen on my Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It. I'd like to see your necklace. It's um yeah, Kristen. You should. Friend Stacy on and show her the picture. It is gorgeous. Okay, she or, or you can post it in the group if you, you know that too. I don't know if she has already. It's 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 really something special. Hmm. What's it made out of? She created it. It's made out of um, copper. <gasps> Ooh, you did copper stuff. She takes sheets of copper, a sheet of copper, and she made this necklace. Oh, and nice. I want to see. Just something you got to see. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, I want to see it. But, you know, talent. Oh, you're not, oh, okay. You're not on my Facebook. If you're, are you in our group, Kristen? No, oh, let me see if I can find you on Facebook here. I'll look and see, Kristen. Can you hear him? Yeah. I can't really hear what he's saying, but here I'm going off. For Kristen, I mean, you got to understand, he's following this conversation that you're having with Kristen. <laughs> what do you he, say? Why? What do you say? He's saying, there you are. There oh. you are. That's what he's saying. He, oh, he's my having God. Conversation. And he, he, he <laughs> that. 
and he he picks his phrases based on what he's hearing and comprehends you know he he was comprehending your conversation about facebook and <laughs> that just blows me away every time he does it but he yeah sorry to inter interrupt you i just oh, okay. I, I put in your name, but I'm I see a bunch of Kristen Hennings, <laughs> so I don't know which one's you, and I can't tell by that tiny little picture. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it a picture of you and a child with you in your in your uh, on your yeah. Facebook profile? Yeah, that's her. She has glasses on. Oh, okay, I got it then. All right, this is the right one then. All righty. Uh oh, where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Okay, I requested you, so you should see it. Because like a bunch of different people came up, and I wasn't. I didn't know which one, and I couldn't tell by your YouTube profile picture because the stupid they put the on. I don't know if it's just Streamyard's chat they do this on, but like the YouTube symbol is like right in front of it, and I could barely see it. I have to run to the potty, so you can entertain the troops while I'm gone. <laughs> you can do that. I'll hold down the fort. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs> you hear Echo? <laughs> Kristen says hi, Echo. Kristen says hi. Kristen says hi. Can you say hello? Can you say hello? No. Parrots are funny. They do what they want when they want. Oh, he gave you the sexy whistle there, Kristen. He says, ooh, ooh. I can't whistle, so I have to do it that way. I can't whistle, Echo. You know I can't. But honest to God, he followed that, he followed that conversation, and he responded to finding you, Kristen. I mean, it's amazing. I know people think I'm crazy, but every time it happens, I have to point it out so that, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that's amazed. <laughs> Probably I'm the only one that's amazed. Maybe nobody else cares, but I just think it's fascinating how a bird, a bird, can follow a human conversation and put in their two cents. I just find that mind-boggling. <laughs> I am making puffy hearts. Let me go get the one out of the oven. It should be done by now. I'll be right back. Okay, it's really, really hot. Ooh. And I knocked off a ball. Darn it. That liquid clay isn't as good as they say it is. Um, okay, so here's the heart I just made. This is my first attempt at a puffy heart. And I know it's terrible, but I learned a lot from it. Um, and I put a little eye hook here, which is coming out because it isn't even secure in there. So, that's kind of cute. I mean, I can do better with mica powders and some coloring and stuff like that. But I just wanted to see how it would react. And I think it's okay. So, I'm going to make a couple more here. Mm, my coffee's so good. All right, so I, I, I've got to let this. This clay is terrible. I, I, it's good to use in the extruder, like if you're going to do something like this, um, which I was going to use around the edges, 
Maybe I can still try that, see how that works. But it's really not good for much else. It's so soft and sticky. Doesn't hold a shape. But I'm going to put it around the edges of the blue hearts here. And then it'll have a double edge. And we'll see how that'll look. I haven't tried that yet. Might just be better and give it some more shape. Are you in your studio yet, Kristen? I meant to ask you that uh, the other day. I forgot to. Are you, um, did you get moved in and you're enjoying working there, I hope? I thought about it. Yeah, they are getting better the more I make. And I learned they're really delicate and they mark really easy, um, you know, which is where I have to get rid of my perfectionism and realize that I'm not a machine. These are not uh, manufactured on a machine. So there's going to be a dent or a dimple or something that isn't exact. Like this is the this is what the clay did, you know. This is how it came out. It's got that blemish because it, there was a bubble there. Um, that's just the way it is. But I'm gonna put this ball chain on it, like I said, so uh, you know I can make those things work to my advantage. But I mean, this was what I started last night was to make the two halves and see how it went. Yep, I sure can use pattern clay. And then you wouldn't see any of the dings and dimples and stuff like that. Why did I start it there? I didn't want to start it there. Oh, you did? Where did you, did you send it? On um, Messenger? Yep. Oh, my God. Oh, see, I just, I just love that. I think that's fantastic. Are you in the Facebook group? Pink Poodles Facebook group? Because we, I post a lot of my stuff in there. People that are in here um, post a lot of their things. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Hey, I was saying, Sharon, my husband was in the hospital Monday, and I brought him home yesterday. So I have. He was not doing well all weekend. I finally convinced him to go to the ER Monday morning. Um, so I'll be getting packages packed and out, but. Um, tomorrow or Friday at the latest because I've been behind. That's put me behind on everything. So I just wanted to let, let you know, Sharon, where your package is, okay, and the status of it. Um, I don't know. Is Can you see? Oh, did she send it? If it's on Facebook, I'll go look at it too. Cause 
Yeah, I don't know if it is. Um, I don't know if she sent it to me in a message or anything. I'm waiting for her to answer. Oh, she said yes. Okay, so did, if you post it in oh. there, uh, Stacy will go there. And, oh, my God. I just love it. She's going to make one out of sterling silver, too. Yeah, don't forget you. Uh, I see that you you and her both do the auctions together. Make sure what if make sure you let me know in a message, you know, with the link so that I can put the link on my Facebook when you guys are doing your auction. Okay, cool. Thanks. We do them Thursdays every Thursday. Oh, okay. You do it every Thursday. Okay. Yeah, just send me a link because otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> I'm terrible. Try to send it to me like as early as you make the link. And this way I'll okay. hopefully see it and remember to get it up, put it on my Facebook. Okay. So yeah, I don't see it on your Facebook, on her Facebook. Maybe I'm if you maybe shoot me a message and put it in there. I'd like to see it. I could I saw a little bit from your thing, but it'll be easier probably if I see it from yeah. the picture itself. Cause Oh, you posted it in the group. Oh, okay. The I didn't even see that until just now. Let me go look. Yeah, Sharon. Sorry. I, I, you know, oh, that's what can do is is all Friday. Um, just that family emergency kind of threw me back days. And actually, I needed this for some calm down time. Oh, that's really pretty, Kristen. Isn't that pretty? She's not yeah, done yeah. with it yet. She might be. I'm not sure. But isn't that really cool? Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love. I. I. And it almost looked that piece of copper almost looks like leather. I thought it was leather. I had to look at it. Yeah. That's cool how you did that though. It looks really neat. Yeah, I love she, it. Great job. I, like, I. I. I've done like a little bit of copper, like stuff like that with copper, but not like that. Not like that. But like. Where you do like this, you could do like the stamping in it and do stuff like that. But I've not done any of that stuff where you actually, I've done like the, where you texture it with the hammer and stuff like that, but not any like that, like whatever you did and how you like curled the edges and all that. I've not done any of that, but I would love to learn how to do that stuff. It's cool. I did very like, very, very like, you know, primitive like stuff. That's not very, just easy stuff. <laughs> nothing hard, nothing complicated. Well, I think we learned in church camp too, you know, like we had tools like something like this that we could write our names on copper, you know, right. um, put little dots in it and stuff like that. That's yeah. the most I've ever done. But, yeah. you know, so if I've always had an interest in, I'm interested in any craft, actually. I enjoy yeah. watching everything. Um doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but boy, I can respect and have kind of an idea what it, what it takes to do that, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like learning all different stuff. Um, I think it's all a lot of fun to do. Like your stained glass. I'm fascinated with that. And it's, fun to do. it's not hard either. No, I thought it was going to be more complicated than it is. It's really not. Well, you probably need to get uh, stained glass at um, a thrift shop that we went to. Um, I bought a bag. Not they're they're completed pieces. There's a couple. There's like most of them are butterflies, what? and then like a, a flower or something. But there were like six pieces for three dollars or something like that, and mm -hmm. the suction cups with it to put it on the window so that when the sun comes in, you know, you get pretty colors. And um, when I saw those, I grabbed them immediately. It's like, yeah, I've seen Stacy do these. These are, yeah. they're really pretty. I like stained glass. So I bought myself some, so I might yeah. not have had I not watched you um, do right. yours. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's not. It once you you know, and and it's not that expensive to get into. Um, I found, especially if you get your glass from like Hobby Lobby, I found that's the best place to get your glass from, because honestly, they have you know they have a nice selection of glass, and it's way cheaper to get it there, like the big sheets of glass that are like twelve by twelve inches. That online is going to go for like twenty, thirty dollars for one sheet of twelve by twelve, whereas there it's like twelve bucks for te between ten and twelve dollars for a sheet of glass at Hobby Lobby, and it's like double the price anywhere else plus shipping. So yeah. that's why I was like, when I finally went to Hobby Lobby, I'm like, well, damn, I'm like, I'm just going to get most of my glass here. Now I got, you know, I'll get some pieces I'll get if I really need a certain color or type of glass that that I, you know, can't get from there. But overall, I, I like the fact that I can just get it from, you know, just get glass from Hobby Lobby when I need a, you know, need some glass. And they have some pretty, pretty glass. So that's a, a good thing. But then the rest of the stuff is not that expensive. It's not like, you know, there are plenty of things that are way more, you know, expensive hobbies than that. Yeah. yeah. It looks expensive. Yeah, it does. That's the thing. I thought it was going to be more expensive than it was. It's really not. A soldering iron is cheap. Um, solder is not that expensive. It's probably one of the more expensive things as far as for a pound of solder, which is, you know, last you quite a while. You know, it's like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. But I can do several, several, several projects with that. You know, right. like I can do like eight to ten projects with one thing of solder. So that's not that bad. And then you know the uh the glass is the most expensive thing and again you know it's it's not terrible if you know where to get it from and if you're just doing small things like you know like sun catchers which is mostly what i'm doing right now it's really you know not that bad i did the kit when i was a kid but it wasn't with a soldering iron uh, see my grandparents my grandmother and my aunt were big crafters. My mother was not. And it was um, But they used to get like the kid of the month, you know, through the magazine. And, you know, got to remember there was no internet, no nothing back then. Um, so they got the kid of the month like, for Easter. They get cotton and fabric and you make a bunny in a basket or something like that, you know. Right. And I think we got a stain. I got a stained glass kit once, um, and like it had the metal tape, and you just tape together your um, pieces. It wasn't anything soldering. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. But it was made for a kid, you know. It wasn't anything right. you would call it a skill. But I mean, I've liked them ever since. Like I said, I like all different kinds of crafts. Um, I've done a lot of different crafts. I just have been madly in love with polymer clay for, this is my second year or my third year. I'm not sure. Hmm. And I have it in my hand every day, you know. Right. I, I don't miss a day unless I'm not home. Right. Um, I'm always doing something with it. and. I, 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 that has not stopped. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I've still have that passion for the clay, but I can't imagine me doing other things. <laughs> we, yeah. we were house left. <laughs> <laughs> my, my craft stuff has taken over, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah it does quickly, too. <laughs> it grows and it multiplies, and I'm like, <laughs> To this point, yep. <laughs> like a gremlin, <laughs> don't get it wet. That's where my husband's a good guy, he really is. Because I mean, like, I have my half of the coffee table that has like my clay machine, and I have my glass mat, and I have my little section in the couch over here that I have my my stamps and you know, findings and mica powders and stuff on and and his half of the couch is clear and then his section where he sits his coffee table's clear you know it's like right. <laughs> where ken sits <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't complain unless it gets over to his stuff you know then 
then he'll say something about it. And he's right. You know, he's absolutely right. He's not wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I keep my crap over on my side. I get it. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I have a craft room, but I cannot sit in a damn chair. Mm -hmm. so I can't, you know, I lounge here when I, um, when I craft, um, up on pillows to, to get some elevation. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I can't sit straight up. So, I do have a craft room, but it's not really usable to me. I can't go in and sit at my desk and do it. Um, yeah. And do then, you, so, is it because of the chair you're sitting in or something? No, it's it's my back. It's my my discs and um right. all that. Yeah, I just had an, the MRI done on my lower back, remember? Um, yeah. And they had said that I have no cushion between my discs. I have four bulging discs and I have severe stenosis pressing on my spinal cord, which is why I can't walk anymore. Right. I mean, I can walk like in the house, but I can't walk for like 10 minutes. Yeah, or, yeah like for long distances. Or I can't. And I was terrified. I didn't know why, you know? Yeah. Like, what the heck's wrong with me? My God. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. And I asked for over a year. I've probably been like this for a year, and it just keeps getting worse. And I've asked my pain management, and they finally get decided to do an MRI. Mm -hmm. Well, now I don't know why. Do they give you stuff for pain? Do you, you you do you take stuff for pain? Yeah, but guess what? Um, they give me Celebrex and yeah. a product and um, gabapentin, Neurontin, yeah. and I weaned myself off the narcotic. Um, in about two weeks, I'll be able to completely stop taking a narcotic. Yeah. Uh, I did not. I don't want that. You know. Yeah. I was on it for years. It bothered me every single day that I was addicted to a narcotic due to pain. Mm -hmm. And I can always go back to it, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, have, I have weaned myself gradually, mm -hmm. very gradually, because I've been on it for years, very gradually. But I need, I need. I felt I needed to get off of it. Um, you know, I mean, like, I'd sit here and it'd be one o'clock and I'd be like, oh, my God, it's one o'clock. Where did my day go? Yeah. I, I was just sitting here, you know. I can't do that. I've got to be productive somehow. Uh, you know, I have chores at the house that I do. Um, right. And I wasn't doing them. Yeah, well, you know. yeah, they're not for everybody for sure, but yeah, there's, I mean, because I, I, I'm on two different ones, and the one, one of them that I'm on, I was on a much higher dose years ago, but I, I decided to wean down to a very, very, very low dose. Um, I'm almost regretting that now because, you know, that was that was several years ago, but I'm, now I'm like, oh, I'm in so much more pain now than I was then, but I still don't really want to go up any higher on that than I was. Right. Um, but you know, cause I don't like that idea either, but without my pain meds, I'm non-functional, you know what I mean? Like, the, you know what I mean? But, you know, and I, you know, like as far as my pain level, it, it just wouldn't be possible. And I don't, and I don't even take them as prescribed. I take them less than prescribed. I always have, but, um, but. I can't take things like gabapentin and all that and Celebrex. I can't, I, you know, I tried all that stuff. I can't take it. It gives me a different reaction, which sucks. Okay. So there's so many things that give me bad reactions that I'm down to like, I can only get my shot and I can take my pain meds and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. And see, I'm kind of like the opposite. Um, I'm finding I have more energy and more mentally alert. Um, and I do, I'm still taking the Celebrex and the gabapentin. Without those, I would be non-functional too. Right, right, right. But I'm dealing with that 
without the heavy narcotic because well, the gabapentin that's I, I tried celebrex that did not work with me the gabapentin i did not try because i have the gabapentin used to be a well i, I think it was a different dose but it used to be used for antidepressant um many, like many years ago they don't really use it for that anymore they just use it because it does help with pain but it, because I have such horrible reactions to any kind of antidepressant, you give me an antidepressant, I'm going to have the opposite, absolute opposite effect. So when they wanted to give me gabapentin, I said no, because I was scared to death. Because I'm Got like, it. oh, no, no, because I know that that was used as an antidepressant at one time. And I'm afraid that it's going to do something. And I'm going to be all, you know, like, I'm going to get depressed. And it's going to be this whole thing. And I'm scared. But, yep. you know, I do understand it is a different dosage. And it's a all totally different thing. But I, like my head is still, I'm afraid that even if it wasn't going to give me a bad effect, it will, because I mentally am thinking that that's what's going to happen. So yeah. I'm all, like, that's why I won't take gabapentin, but I'm almost getting to the point where it's like, maybe I should try it. But then I'm like, Oh God, if something happens, like, like I still in my head have a panic to it because I'm afraid something's going to happen yeah, and I'm I afraid I'm going to manifest it to happen because I'm panicking. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, no, that's very true. I mean, there's nothing that there's nothing to that's nothing to scoff at, I guess okay. I'll say, um, because I I react totally different than this is the last narcotic that they can give me because badly to all the others. This one, I didn't react as badly, but I still feel I function better without it but with um any other antidepressant that's given for to stop smoking or anything like that I go I totally go bizarre I completely different I mean I'll call the doctor I'll be crying I've been crying for five days I can't handle this I'm you know when it's supposed to make everybody feel good, you know, it doesn't for me. Yeah. And, and I know doctors get tired of me going through the medication list, you know? Right. Yeah. My, my list on, at the pharmacy and at the doctor's office of what I'm quote unquote allergic to is huge. Yeah. I mean, six, seven pages because I react badly. Right. Not that yes, I'm allergic. It's not even that I'm allergic to the medicines. I just have I just have a bad reaction, but it's not an allergic reaction. It's just a side effect. It's a bad side effect that'll cause the problem most of the time. Yeah, they just put it in with the allergy stuff. Yeah, I don't let them put it in with the allergy because I don't want that. I because there are other meds that might be like like a similar med that then they don't want to give me because of that. And I'm just like, it's, you know, if they put it in as an allergy, so I don't let them put it in as an allergy unless it's truly an allergy. Well, actually it's not true. I, unless it's like a severe thing, like, like a severe interaction where I did have a severe interaction with one medication that mixed with another one. And I can't, I know I can't take that one. So that one's on my list. And so, but other than that, which I shouldn't have done that one. It doesn't look as good. Dang it. Um, but other than that, I don't let them put them all down as allergies just because I'm afraid it's going to limit me in the future. Yeah. Where, I get where, it. You know, another one might be actually fine, but, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. just like, I'm yeah. Yeah. And it, it, you might get a benefit from it, but they're not right. going to test it because it, it, right. you know, the ingredients or whatever are the same as what's on your allergy list, something like right, that. Right. And that's why I'm like, eh, so... And my doctor knows that so they're like, you know, they usually will say, you know, okay, you didn't, you didn't let, you didn't, you had a bad reaction to it, but it wasn't like a life threatening reaction. It was just a, a very intolerable side effect that I was not willing to deal with that caused me enough where it was like, all right, this ain't going to work, you know, or something. Yeah. And I have that on there on, on a ton of medications, especially the, yeah. you know, they're just, um, the, I, I react so horribly with the psych meds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. And Celebrex um, works for me. I was on Motrin for a long time, and then my PCP said, Oh, no, you can't be on that. You can get off of that. That's damaging to your liver. So 
got off of that and got on Celebrex, yeah. which I know that there's a whole lot of difference, but um, it, that works for me like Motrin did. So right. hmm. uh, I'm good with that. And the gabapentin, you notice a difference, but um, my pain management doesn't know I'm I'm leaving myself down on this narcotic. They don't know. Right. I, I don't like them. I don't like anything about their practice. I haven't been back for, I should have been back in March, and I didn't go in March. Um, I might not go back. I yeah. might just uh, go a whole different route, you know. I don't know if disability is going to insist that I am in pain management or not, but I don't think they can insist that I'm on a narcotic, right? No, no. Um, Because that's what they want to do. That's mm -hmm. what management wants to do, and I don't want it, so. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, pain management has, they have lots of options, and lots of things they can do. They have different Things. I mean, if you, I don't know about, you You know, if they're not telling you those things, then you should go to a different pain management. But there are lots of different things they can do. Like they have a thing where they can do like they do different shots and they do different techniques and different things. They also have different medications that are non-narcotic and they have all kinds of things. But, you know, obviously. If, yeah, I've done all those. Yeah. Yeah. And if they, yeah, if you do them and they don't work, then, well, that's, you know, right. then, you know then you're, up there, you're up shit's Creek at that point and you have to kind of figure something out. That's the only problem. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That's exactly. I did that whole path. I did let them shoot into my spine for every yeah. three for years. Um, yeah. Help. They wanted to do a nerve block on yeah. my, yeah, I had a test for that. It didn't work out so well. <laughs> Can't move my arms. Mm. They said I'd have to have physical therapy afterwards. Why do I huh. want to do that? Huh? That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they block the nerve that comes out of the spine to the shoulders, um, and they block that nerve, wouldn't that mean that I can't that really? arm? Function? Right. Well, what? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it does help with my fibro too, Rhonda. It really does. It helps with my migraines. It's the only thing that saved my life. I had chronic migraines to where they were months long. I mean, where I was in bed yes. months at a time. See, that's where they put me on the Topamax because I had migraines. Mm -hmm. They put me on the Topamax. And, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. That's the one I had the worst reaction to ever in my life. I was going to say, I can't take that. Um, the oh, image. I used to have the injection where you had to inject it into your thigh when you had a migraine. Do you oh, really? remember those days? No. Oh. I didn't have that. It's an EpiPen, and it had Imitrex in it. And oh. I didn't have my daughter do it because I couldn't get my thumb to push that stupid button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know? yeah. I know it's going to hurt like hell for three minutes that you got to yeah. leave it in. Uh -oh. My daughter do it for me, my oldest daughter. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, let me do that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll torture you, Mom. Don't worry. Yeah, I got you, Mom. I'll do that. Yeah, so those were the days back. I was like 23, and I and I finally got some relief um, in 2015. So, I mean, I'm, I'm 60 now, you know. So, uh, yeah. I debilitating migraines for many, many years. The only shot I ever had to give myself was the, um, for my Crohn's, I had to give myself shots in the stomach for that okay. for a while, but that just messed me up so bad. It's hard to do. Well, I don't care about the shot. That didn't bother me at all. It's just the, the it's the, it's the side effect of the medicine because it, medicine, because it was a biologic drug, which is a, 
they like lower your immune system significantly and cause a lot of problems. I kept having lots of problems from that, from taking the Humira and, you know, and it's, it was just a mess. It rotted my teeth out of my mouth. It's the whole reason that my teeth are effed mm -hmm. up now and I have to get dentures. It's it just, it screwed everything up. Stacy, I blame gabapentin for mine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't want to go on that then. <laughs> I'm already having enough problems. We do. And you're the only other person I've ever heard say that their teeth are bad because of a medication. It's oh, I, I, my, my dentist even asked me because he had done dental work on me a year and a half earlier to me going on gabapentin. I mean, Humira, we got gabapentin on the brain, um, yeah. on the Humira for my Crohn's. And yeah. So, and he, my teeth were perfect. He got everything fixed. I had, you know, crowns done, I, you know, uh, you know, root canals and, the, and cavities filled and everything done. And so my teeth were perfect. A year and a half later, in that year and a half, I had gone on the Humira, my Crohn's, because my, my Crohn's had gotten really bad. I got on the Humira and they were pumping me full of the Humira and they were giving me these high dosages. And every time they did, I would end up with this infection that I had to stop taking it, go to the hospital, like all this stuff, because you, you, you got to be careful of infection and all this stuff. So it was like nonstop. I was having issues with this Humira. And finally, I was like, you know, I'm not doing it. And that's when I finally got the, uh, got the doctor to do the anti-MAP therapy, which is what I'm on now, which, you know, made my Crohn's way better. And all that. But in that interim of that time, my teeth, it sucked every ounce of nutrients out of my teeth. And I, when I went back to him because I was having, I had an abscess, he, I thought he was joking. He said, oh, you haven't had an x-ray in over a year. Let's do an x-ray because he had to see it, the x-rays for the abscess anyway. I had like an abscess. And, you know, and he said to me, he came out and he, you know, perfectly straight face. And he's like, he goes, unfortunately, you know, your teeth are really bad and it looks like you probably need dentures i thought he was joking because literally a year and a half earlier i was fine right and i looked at him and i'm like what i'm like what, what are you talking about i'm like ha, ha ha you know like i thought he was joking he's like no no no, i'm serious he's like he and he and one of the first things he asked me is, is you on any kind of medication or were sick or anything recently and i told him about you know that i that i was and he goes yeah he goes that'll do it he goes it'll it'll take every ounce of the nutrients you know it was just crazy wow no, they don't tell me nothing. No, they didn't tell me that. They don't tell you anything. Doctors aren't going to give you a list of side effects. They don't care. Right. They don't tell you, oh, if you have any infections or anything, let us know. And that's it. That's all they told me. And, yeah. I had, and so they would take me off of it for a period of time to clear up the infection. Then they would pump me full of the medicine again. And it kept doing this. I kept getting sick every time. And I'm like, are, are we going to be done with this? Because this is not working. I'm like, you can't just give it to me give me this massive dose and then I get sick and you can't give it to me because they're supposed to give me a big dose and then a bunch of little doses to make it work. Well, they were giving me a big dose. Then I would get sick and then I couldn't take it. Couldn't take the little doses. So then we had to wait like six or, you know, however many weeks, then I would get another massive dose. And it was just kept, it just kept killing me because it was just so ridiculous. It was yeah. too much. It was way too much. And so I just gave up. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And that's when I found, finally found a doctor that was close enough to me where I can get to him and get the anti-MAP therapy, which is what saved me in the first place. You know, that was what saved me from having to do all this again, was right. getting, you know, doing that. But yeah, it was just ridiculous. And the doctor I had just wouldn't listen to me. I kept saying, this medicine is, is making me so sick. I'm like, I cannot keep doing this. You know, I was anemic. I was, I was having all kinds of problems and it was just going on and on and on. And finally, you know, I just was like, I can't take, if I have to take one more shot of that medicine, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing it, not doing this anymore. Yeah. But they don't listen to these doctors. They, you know, it's a lot of times when you get a doctor, don't, don't want to listen to you. That's the biggest problem. But don't you, th you know, why in the world aren't they telling us we're going to lose our friggin' teeth? Right, right. I, I blame it on gabapentin. I don't know about anybody else, but I blame it on the gabapentin that um, is, I mean, my teeth are gone. I had to have my whole top denture, or top teeth pulled. I have a denture. And I never went back because I hate it so much, but my bottom teeth are, are broken and they need pulled. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I got to go to an oral surgeon for that, and they're going to have to put me out, and I just, I haven't done it yet, you know? Yeah. But 
I need a monster too, and I blame it on gabapentin. My teeth, I have always had trouble with them. They were filled to where they were nothing but a shell, you know, mm -hmm. filling a shell of tooth, and that was it. Right. And, um, but the roots were always fine, you know. Right. It was never, I never had root canals and I didn't have, you know, dent, um, gum disease, none of that. But within from 2015 till 20, 2019, probably within those four years, my teeth, they were infected and I could, no matter how many rounds of antibiotics I took, it didn't clear them up. Yeah. And he said, we, you know, that's your next step is to pull them because we can't get that, those infections cleared up. He said, every root is infected. Well, the only reason that would happen is if it's, they're dying. Yeah. Well, the only reason they're dying is because of gabapentin. That's the only mm -hmm. explanation there is because I hadn't started on narcotics or any of that at the time, you know? Right. Yeah. Narcotics, don't, narcotics don't typically affect your teeth. Um, you saying there weren't any other medication. Like I'm on 15 different ones now. It'd be hard to tell which one it would have been. And, and also, it, if, if it might not have been a gabapentin, it could have been a combination of medicines that if you were on a lot of medications. You know what I mean? It didn't have to be just one. Yeah. You know, it a combo caused some sort of issue. You know, it, it, it really could have been anything in that situation. You know, when it comes to the, if you were on a lot of meds. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda, you said, how did I find out about the anti-MAP therapy? Uh, I did a lot of research about Crohn's disease and found, um, found out about anti-MAP therapy. And then it was, it was, uh, it was just, I had to figure out, um, a doctor that would treat me for it because even though the treatments are antibiotic treatments that are obviously FDA approved, but the actual treatment combination of those drugs is not FDA approved yet. But they are in the process of dealing with that because they've already done like they've, they've done all these studies and they did the, the clinical trials. And they did all this. So I don't know where they're at with it at this time, but they did all the clinical trials. And it's such a slow process. It's, it's so annoying. But now they've got like, you know, but but anyway, I have a doctor that treats me for it. And the problem is you have to find a doctor that will treat you for it because like most piece or most gastro doctors are not just going to treat you for it. And they can't, um, especially if they're part of a group of doctors that have a certain way of doing things that they can't, they're not going to do that, but you have to find a specific doctor that treats for anti-MAP therapy and is, is okay with doing that. And I found one luckily in Alabama who does. So, you know, but I, he had, the reason why I've, I've been having problems lately is because he had asked me to go off of my regimen and said, I'd like to see you try to go off of it and see if maybe you might be in remission. Well, clearly I wasn't because I went off of it for like a month. And now I'm back on it, but I'm trying to get back on it, you know, like, or I'm back on my regimen, but it's taking a while for it to kick back in because that's why I've been having a lot of constipation and stuff lately. Cause I'm like, okay, so I'm hoping that'll go away now that I'm getting back on my medicine. Um, but also there's one of the drugs I can't get anymore because it's in Australia and that I've been having problems. They've been having problems for a while getting it because it's not available here anymore because we don't need it here because it was for some disease that isn't around anymore, like smallpox or some shit. And we don't have that here anymore. So they didn't need that drug. And it's just another antibiotic that's not necessary for anything else. So the only, there's a couple of other countries that produce it. And, and my doctor would hook me up with a pharmacy in Australia. And that's where he has me getting it from. But it, it but the whole, it, long story short, for like the past year, I haven't been able to get it at all. And there's been a lot of issues or more than a year, but it, it's been a lot of issues. So I was just on the two medications when I was supposed to be on three and the two medications were doing fine. So I'm hoping that me going off of them didn't do something to where now I need that third one to help jump me back in. And so I'm hoping that it'll, I'll get back to normal without that third one. I don't know. We'll see. So it's just a big mess, but it's the only thing that helped me go from having you know, almost needing my rectum out and having to have a colostomy or an ostomy bag or whatever, um, an ostomy bag to, you know, getting back to pretty much normal. <laughs> nothing else did that. Not, no strong drug from, a, from any of these supposedly smart doctors. Nothing helped me but that. So any of these high-powered drugs didn't do nothing but 
a simple antibiotic treatment is what <laughs> fixed it. Well, the drug companies are the ones that, that um, uh, I believe, that guide where physicians go next as far as treatments go. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's, you know, they, they don't they get back for, 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 for. They make their money. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get a cure. They're, they're going to let you go all the way to the bag. Then you get supplies that you right. No. Yeah. I, it's let me go grab my, I need a round circle cutter. And I think I have one. Let me see. Rhonda, I was reading your um, statements about the fibro makes you feel like acids being dropped. Oh, my gosh. I get those in my arms and my hands. And I never under, I don't, well, until this moment, never heard anybody else um, having those experiences. But I always wondered what the heck it felt like somebody was taking a hot needle and just jamming it into my arm. Um, or my forearm or my fingers, you know, I get that in my finger. And I don't know if it's fibro or if it's the, um, you know, the compression in my cord or if it's um, the stenosis in my spine and my cervical area. I don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was, but maybe it is fibro that d does that. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it friggin' hurts. I mean, it, it makes me jump and holler. It's like somebody actually ticked something and stick it in you. And the first thing I think of is something bit me, you know. Um, but it's deeper than. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Rhonda. I appreciate hearing that. Um, thanks for sharing that because now I know. Uh. I worry about this stuff, but, you know, I can't talk to my doctors about every tiny little thing that happens, you know? I mean, I've got too much wrong with me <laughs> that I try and not sound too much like a hypochondriac, but I sure would if I talked to them about everything that goes on with my body. But that's just one thing that I wasn't sure about if I should bring up or not. Because I didn't want another medication to calm something down. I, I, I just didn't want another med, so I never said anything. But now that makes me feel better that I have an idea of what's causing it. And that it's it sucks, but, I'll, but I'm not going to... It's not a symptom of something worse. Which is what I always hear. Because like pain management tells me, they love to tell me it's not going to get any better. Oh, thanks. I don't know where my circle cutters went. I don't know what happened to them, but I don't know. They're probably in a cabinet that I can't get to, so I'm just going to have to oh, wing it. <laughs> Or find something else that can. Soda cap. Yeah, I have caps, but I didn't really want to do that unless it was 100% necessary. But I'm thinking. Because then I have to like, like this. That works, but. Uh, it will work. It's not dirty. I thought maybe it had paint in it, but. Find it. Find the right. I do hate it when they ask to rate my pain. Oh, I hate that too. How about it hurts everywhere all the time? Okay. How's that for a pain rating? <laughs> How's that? Does that work for you? Cool. Oh, I want to take about an eight today. You know? Did you take your meds? Yeah. <laughs> God. I know they have to count all your pills. I'm just like, okay. 
Oh yeah, that really. Oh, yeah. They, they t they'll tell me stories about the, there's people that'll come in. There was one lady that tell me stories about how one lady brought in somebody else's pee or something, and I was just like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> they were like telling me like all this stuff, and I'm just like, oh, I, like why? Well, I mean, I guess if they're gonna these people are gonna go through that much trouble for it, and I'm just thinking to myself, why? I mean, right. is, it really, is it really worth going through that much trouble? Mm -hmm. I I yeah I'd get tired of feeling like a criminal. Right. Yeah. Because they do kind of lump everybody together, and it it, it almost seems like that you know they treat everybody like a criminal. And I mean I understand the situation, but at the same time, you know don't treat everybody like a criminal. <laughs> You're dealing with when you walk in the door, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Stacy. Stacy is always her drug count has always come out right. Her drug tests have all come out great. Yep. Know that before you walk in and start acting like uh, that might be. Luckily, the, luckily, my pain clinic is great. They don't treat me like that at all. Um, and I, you know, and it's probably because I've been with them a long time and they know, you know, that I don't, you know, they know that I don't, you know, there's nothing, go, you know, to, I'm not abusing anything and, or anything like that. Because I'm the one that chose to wean down on on one of the biggest narcotics I was on. You know what I mean? So obviously they know. Otherwise, why would I have done that? You know, anybody who was in there to kind of beat the system or to do this, that, or the other for nefarious reasons wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't yeah. have been like, yeah, I don't need this drug anymore. So I'm going to jump down from 30 milligrams twice a day to 10 milligrams once a day. You know, obviously that, you know. But I say my I've been with my pain management for probably four years now. Yeah. Never had a dirty drug test. My medications have, oh, if anything, they've been over. Right. They should have, not under. Now, they have been over a couple of times. Um, and I don't know why. I, I don't know why, but because I take them all the time. So I don't know why that happens. But, um, and they still do the very same thing. They they walk in and they act like mm. you're, you know. If I, that's why I don't say anything anymore. I just yeah. tell them the pain level, and I, I I get my prescription called into the pharmacy, yeah. and walk away for another month, you know, yeah. until because I have to see them every single month. Yep. I may or may not be subjected to a drug test, which really annoys the crap out of me. It really, it annoys me. It really does. Yeah. Because if you get treated good, like you're saying, you know, that they know, they, they don't look at my history and say, okay, this is Kim. She's, you know. Well, we because I guess they figure it, it, anybody could change because it can change with anybody, you know. It, it, and, and it sometimes can change innocently, too, because some people might be fine for years and then all of a sudden start taking more of their medicine and it just kind of, you know, it can happen that way. And I understand that, you know, but they, they, they hardly drug test me and they might drug test me like once every five times I go in there if I'm lucky. Well, they act like you're, you're on the street shooting heroin. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I know that I know um, the other pain clinic that I used to go to um, like years and years ago, that one was much worse. And I, I didn't like, you know, I didn't like that, you know, the way they treated, every, you know, from the right. get go and like the way they treated people. So I understand, you know, and there's some that are way worse than others because I went to a different branch of that. It, they had several branches and one time they didn't have an appointment on the day that I needed it. So they said, well, I'll send you to the Nashville branch or whatever. Well, that one was like even 10 times worse. They were just like, it was almost like they treated everybody like they were some scum of the earth. And I was just like, damn, I'm like, I ain't going back to this branch. Like, yes, Jesus. I always feel that way. It's in the city maybe. And that's the reason maybe why they treated people. I don't know. Maybe because they have a lot more issues there right in Nashville. But holy crap, it, it was bad. I was like, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah. Who needs that? And then you can do that. My God, you pay for that. Yeah. You pay for like shit. Like shit. You did yeah. like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, you pay, you pay them to be treated like shit. Ugh. I had a big fight with them uh, a couple months ago because I I had um, gotten a pers uh, marijuana card, a medical marijuana card for my PTSD. My right. so wanted me on medical yeah. marijuana. Um, calm me down some 
and she wanted to know the name of my pain management doctor so she could contact them and uh, everybody gets in the same thing, you know, as, as my medical team. Right. Because she was relatively new to me. Um, you know, we got established a little bit and then her next step was she wanted to get, you know, to know my other doctors and what I'm on and, you know, things like that. Well, the owner came in to the room and he tore me a new asshole. Why? He flipped because he would lose his license what? if I was on medical marijuana and he wrote me a prescription for uh, the narcotic that I'm on. And we went back and forth, me and him, back and forth and back and forth. I said, look, all I asked you for, and I didn't even ask you, all I asked the RA for was the name of the person that my psych doctor can call so that you guys can be on the same page with my treatment. And he said, and I'm going to tell you again, I am not writing you a prescription for a narcotic if you're going to take the medical marijuana. Which is it? You got to choose. Which is it? And I said, I have to choose today between my mental health and my physical health. He said, yeah. yeah. Which is it going to be? Well, <laughs> I was addicted to a narcotic because I have been on it so many years for chronic pain. What do you think it's going to be? Right. You know? And ever since then, I've been taking myself down a little by little by little, by little, little by little. Now I'm on a quarter. Like I, they're um, patches. They're film that you put inside your mouth. And right. they just, I am down to, I cut them in quarters. And I was supposed to do two a day, one in the morning and one at night. I am down to one quarter of one patch now. Oh, okay. well, that's good. So I'll go on that. I started that uh, yesterday. So I, I'll, I'll do that for another week or two, and then I'll be done with it. And I'll have taken myself off of that narcotic, and I won't have to deal with them anymore. How sad is that? I just want to cry now because that's stupid, though. That's just stupid. But also, you're not addicted to the narcotic. You're dependent. There's a difference. Somebody who's addicted to it is somebody who takes it when they're not supposed to, takes more than they're supposed to, and has a problem. So don't say that you're addicted. You are dependent. No, you're Dependency not is not something that you can help. Because obviously, if your doctors are putting you on it, then you're going to become dependent on anything that your doctors put you on, even if you take it exactly the way you're supposed to. Yeah, you're right. I'm I not. I want you to say the wrong thing to somebody, and they and they take it that way. I don't want you yeah. to say it to the wrong doctor. I'm addicted to it. They're going to be like, huh? So just say, I, you know, of course, I, I've been on it a long time, so I've built up a dependency, and that's what you say. I just don't want you to say the wrong thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I ended up in the ER because I was on the fentanyl patch, and the patch wasn't delivering it steady to me, and it was sending me into akathisia, which is a mental disorder. So I ended up in the ER twice, not, not in January, before the year scary. before. I wouldn't, yeah, I don't even think I could ever touch that stuff. I'd be afraid. I don't blame you for being off of that. The best pain reliever I have been on. I had no side effects. It was the best pain reliever. It was, I was clear headed. My pain was mild instead of severe. Right. Um, it's just, it, I couldn't figure out what was going on with my head, you know? Um, they, they, that's, this is one that all started with me that I've got to get myself off of half of these medications so I can be clear and, you know, functional again, um, is that I, they told me they did a drug test. They took my history. They researched my records. The, the, the head department, the head of the psych department came down and talked to me and he said he thinks it's the fentanyl patch is not delivering medication steady enough right going through withdrawal so okay so i'm a drug addict right <laughs> I, I mean you know it's it's sending me into this into my own head to where i'm flipping out right and the doctor because my something's wrong with my head you know 
like it, it, it's like you have ever had restless legs I ha yes i have it oh good lord i was just dealing with that last night oh it's driving mm -hmm. me insane yes okay oh. it's that all over your body oh no you oh. can't get away from yourself you're trying to get away and out of your own head and you can't mm -mm, yeah. that to me said to me that this is this is way more serious than i want to be in you know right, right. Um, I've got to get myself off of this stuff. And so I'm almost there, which I'm happy about. And, and you know what? Yeah, I'm in a lot more pain. I'm not going to lie about it. I am. Yeah. They offered me fentanyl patches and I said, no, this was years ago. And I said, no, it's okay. Well, <laughs> see, I mean, the, this is the only drug we have left to offer you kind of situation, you right. know? That's, that's how I ended up at a pain clinic was because, so I've had back problems my whole life. Ever since I was 12, 13 years old, I was in the hospital in traction because they discovered, you know, I, I had, was in gymnastics. I ended up kind of like twisting my back wrong in gymnastics and I could not feel my legs oh, from the waist down. And so I ended up in the hospital and, and my, uh, you know, my, uh, the, the feelings started to come back in my legs and stuff, but they, they, when they did all these MRIs and tests on my back and stuff, they found that I had cartilage missing completely. I was born without it in part of my spine. And then my back was like, literally, it was so screwed up that like, if that's your spine, you know, and your car, your, the bones sit on top of each other, mine was like teetering on the edge of just being broken. Ugh. And, and so they put, you know, went through traction, went through this, went through that, whatever, got me back to a certain place. And then they said, basically, you know, you know, you can't do anything anymore. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, you basically, you know, long story short, mm -hmm. I wasn't even supposed to walk. You know what I mean? Like practically, it was like that type of thing. It was, uh, you know, not allowed to do nothing. So I was just banned from having a life. And for a period of time, that's the way it was until I said, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, you can't take somebody like me who is bounce off the wall energy and just tell me I can do nothing but sit now. I can just sit. That's it. I can't do nothing else. I can sit. I'm not allowed to get up. I'm not allowed to do nothing. Well, that was not going to happen for long. And so I just said, I don't care. And, and my mom, I said, I don't care. I'm doing what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to do that. I, my mom put her foot down with the gymnastics. I couldn't do that. But I was I was able to do dance and stuff like that. You know, well, I, I, she didn't want me to do anything. You know, everything was always about my back. My whole, I, I mean, I my whole life, every time I did anything, Stacey, your back. Stacey, your, don't do that. You know, like, so it was a, an issue. And I had pain. I had pain, but because I was so young and well, come to find out now I know, but I have something in our family that is a genetic issue called Ehlers, Ehlers Danlos or whatever, Ehlers Danlos. It's a connective tissue disorder and there's 13 different types of it. And I'm like one specific type. I don't even know the actual type I am. My doctor said that I was, I think he said type three or something. I don't know. But anyway, my niece has it. My, it, it, it actually caused my nephew to die, my brother to die because there is a, there is one of the 13 types of this. It, it can affect your, it's a connective tissue and actually it, 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 and your veins, which I didn't know your veins and capillaries and all that are considered a connective tissue. Um, and mm -hmm. they can, and what happens is you lose the collagen. That's why like your, your veins and stuff, you know, all of the things in your body can stretch because of collagen. Collagen mm -hmm. makes everything flexible. Otherwise, without it, we'd be like just rigid and not be able to stretch and our skin wouldn't regenerate and all this stuff. So with people with EDS, we are unable to produce enough collagen. Actually, we overproduce collagen. I I'm trying to remember how it goes. We overproduce collagen and then but something they, or, or it decreases. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. It's something. I don't remember how it works. They're not as stable because you don't, you have too much collagen. You have too much okay, stretch. Right. Yes. Stable. Yes. We have, that's it. We have too much stretch because eventually things just stretch out and they don't go back. The collagen right. it just stretches out and then nothing happens and, and we just stop stretching, you know, but when we're younger, like when I was younger, I was like a contortionist. I can basically kiss my own ass because yeah. I was yeah. so flexible and in gymnastics and I could do all these things that most other kids couldn't do. And so I was, I was extremely flexible and yep. I was, you know, I still am to this day, extremely flexible. And, you know, but I, you know, had a lot of problems 
Um, and well, the pain wasn't as, you know, I was, I was always pretty tough. Pain wasn't like, you know, and, and actually somebody like, if you have a high tolerance for pain, you have a tendency to be able to deal with things a little bit better than other people, which I'm lucky to have that, to be honest, because I don't think I'd be able to deal with my back issues and my problems if I didn't have such a high tolerance for pain. Um, be, but at, you know, so when I was younger, it didn't affect me or didn't hurt me like it does now. Of course that yeah. takes place with age and time as things get worse and the collagen gets worse and your bones start grinding on each other. That's where that takes place. But my thing was, it wasn't as much painful for me to have, you know, it, and that's why I couldn't understand, I guess, as a kid, why everybody wanted me to sit down and not do yeah. things. Cause I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like in my head, I'm fine. But it's because I, I had such a my back was so unstable that yes, I was fine at the time, but one wrong move and they were afraid I was going to become paralyzed. So that yeah. was why they didn't want me to do this, that and the other, but I just refused to listen. And my mom finally gave in and was like, whatever, you know, <laughs> and I did whatever I wanted to do. And so yeah. luckily I didn't have any major issues for a long time. But then in my 20s, I started to throw my back out continuously. And every time I did, I'd have to go and have x-rays done, they'd have to check and they have to make sure that it wasn't, you know, like so severe that it was like, ah, you know, scary. And most of the time it wasn't, there was some, there was a couple of times that was pretty bad, but most of the times it was okay. And they would do physical therapy to get it back aligned or whatever. And as I got older though, when I did more physical things like work-wise, as I started to do, I had a lot of very physical jobs. I always had my own businesses. I was always doing this type of job where I was making something. I was painting something. I was doing this. I was doing interior painting or I was cleaning houses. Once I started doing that and I wasn't sitting, cause I was sitting at a desk job for a while, like for periods of time I did desk jobs and that's when things were worse for me. But when I found that I started doing an active job, I found that my back would strengthen. The muscles around my back would get stronger and Luckily, I still had enough collagen where, you know, or I still had, it, you know, enough elastic elasticity. My muscles and tendons were strengthening. It would, was something that worked well. And my back, as long as I kept it strong and I was always doing something physical, I mm -hmm. stayed good. I, my back wouldn't hurt so bad and it would, you know, I wouldn't throw it out. That was the biggest thing. I didn't throw it out. out. I wasn't throwing out my back left and right. Um, and so it was fine. But then when I got into my 30s, the pain, I well, I found out I had rheumatoid arthritis and the Crohn's disease and the whole like any all these autoimmune things, which then led into a totally different realm of problems. Because then when you add rheumatoid and fibromyalgia, by the way, too, and when you add when you throw all that into the mix, rheumatoid affects every single joint in your body. It's osteo affects just certain joints that you use, which I had osteoarthritis developing as well at the time, but my biggest problem in, in the beginning was the rheumatoid, which we went undiagnosed for the longest time. We couldn't figure out what was going on. Then when they finally diagnosed it in my mid thirties, I guess, which was pretty rare for somebody to have it in their mid thirties. But, oh, yeah. but you know, I, that, I still didn't know I had the EDS, the, the, the connective tissue, because, uh, you know, it wasn't until actually it wasn't until like a year ago because that I actually physically knew I I found out that I had a con connective tissue disorder, but I didn't know what it, I didn't know what that meant. It's like a, a weird turn of events happened where, so uh, my brother died in 2003, I think. Yeah, 2003, my brother died, dropped dead of an aneurysm. Um, my brother had severe scoliosis and all his life. And, you know, he had a mitral valve prolapse, which is a, which is a, um, a heart murmur type of thing. Mm -hmm. And he was on medication for it for a long time, but then didn't went off the medication at some point in his life, but that didn't have any effect on anything, but we all thought for a while it did. But anyway, turns out when he died, the autopsy came back and the, the, the person who did the autopsy or whatever came back and said, it's possible that he had something called Marfan syndrome. So we're like, huh? And they're, and he said, well, you know, look into it, blah, blah, blah. And you can get genetic testing done of your family to find out if, if it runs in your family. Because it, it usually it, it comes from like, some, you know, 50%. Like, I think it, it has to be like one or both of your parents have to have it to, to bring it. And then 50% of your kids can get it. So that was like the thought for like the longest time. And but nobody got the genetic testing done. 
even though like, and, and what's funny is when we found out what the symptoms were from our fans, we realized that his kids all have the symptoms. His kids all are following in that step. Obviously he got it from either my father or mother. We think my father and right. well, I didn't show signs of, you know, like at least I didn't think about it. I, I, I didn't, I don't even know. I don't even remember if I, well, I had some of the weird characteristics of it, but I never thought I had it, but they had to, I guess they had to, I guess, I don't know. I just didn't think anything of it for me, you know, like, I, cause I didn't think I'd had like some, I guess maybe I heard the, maybe I heard the characteristics or something secondhand from my niece or from somebody, but I didn't like, I never, I don't think I looked it up ever for myself or like to even think about it. Cause I just assumed I didn't have it. And I assumed it was just my brother because he was the one that had the standout stuff that I heard about, like the scoliosis. And he was like super tall and he had very lanky um, arms and legs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I had gone to the doctor for my neck because my neck is all crooked and weird. And you, you can't tell from the outside, but on the inside, it's like a hot mess in there. And right. so I went to the doctor for that. And this was back when I was in my, I don't know, mid thirties or late thirties. And the, the orthopedic doctor took a look at my x-rays of my neck. And he didn't know anything about Marfan syndrome. Like that was just something that they said to look into with my brother when he died. But like, it wasn't even on the radar. He couldn't, you know, he didn't know any of this doctor I went to, didn't know nothing about any of that. He comes in after looking at my x-ray and he goes, have you ever heard of Marfan syndrome? And I just looked at him and I said, why do you ask that? It's such an odd thing to ask, you know, like why? And nobody's even heard of that. Why would this doctor just ask me that? And I said, uh, yeah, I'm like, it might've been what killed my brother. I'm like, well, why are you asking me this? And he's like, well, I would like to test you, you know, just like do some basic, not the genetic testing. He just wanted to just rule out any heart issues because a lot of times with Marfan syndrome, it causes heart issues. Well, actually hundred percent of the time it, it causes like heart issues with Marfan syndrome. So he wanted to rule me out because he said that I have the characteristics of it and he wanted to rule it out as far as look at my cardiovascular stuff. And so he did all these tests on my heart, like had all this stuff done. And he said, okay, he goes, I don't think you have Marfan syndrome. He goes, but I think you probably have a connective tissue disorder, you know, blah, blah. I didn't think anything of that comment where he said the connective tissue disorder. I did not know that Marfan's was considered a connective tissue disorder. Didn't think about there's other connective tissue disorders, not like nothing rang in my head. As far yeah. as I knew, I didn't have Marfan's and I was like, cool, you know, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to drop dead. You know, I'm not going to have because Marfan's is similar to uh, Ehlers-Danlos. It's similar in a way because it has the same connective tissue disorder problem, but it also carries with it a definite heart issue, which can kill people and mostly does end up ultimately getting people. And so I was just happy to know that I did not have that. Yes. And I was like, okay, so when I heard him say something about you probably have you, it looks like you have a different type of, you know, some other connective tissue disorder, but you don't have Marfan. So see you later. And that was it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I didn't think anything of that comment. And then it wasn't until my niece had the genetic testing done finally to find out if they had Marfan syndrome, because she had a lot of the symptoms that my brother had and all this stuff that she came back and said, believe it or not, it's not Marfan syndrome that we have. It's called, you know, EDS, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I went, huh. And then when she said the words connective tissue disorder, it clicked. And I went, oh, I'm like, that's what that doctor was referring to. So then when she gave me the information and I looked it up, I went, oh, that makes sense because there's so many different types of Ehlers-Danlos. It's not like the Marfans where it's like, there's one little box for Marfans. Ehlers-Danlos has many different types, many different characteristics, many different, like, yeah, it's, it's a very like long spectrum. And so it has like 13 different types or something like that. So whatever the type my brother had was the type that affected your vascular system and cause, you know, could potentially causes the uh, aneurysms and stretches your veins and causes like thinness of the veins, which then causes bubbles, which is obviously an aneurysm and stuff like that. So yeah. we had that. So they did it for my niece because she also has mitral valve prolapse, which is another sign of Ehlers-Danlos. It was also a sign of, of the Marfan syndrome. But so she, so the, her doctors wanted to genetically test and really find out if that's what it is. They found out it is, but she doesn't, I think at first I thought she had said that she had this, I, you know, in my head before I knew much, I thought she had the same type as my brother, but you can be in the same family line and have different types of it. It comes, holy shit, that scared me so bad. Clap of thunder. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. 
<laughs> I jumped. I was like, what the hell was that? Um, but anyway, so she, you know, it, it, even though you, you're in the same family bloodline, you can have completely different, like, you know, you can have, you know, type mm -hmm. one or type 13 mm -hmm. or type 12. It's very bizarre. So she has a different type, I think, than my brother had. And then my nephew also had the same type as my brother had because he dropped dead three years after his father did. So, you know, my father had aneurysms. Uh, I don't know if ultimately, you know, like one of them killed him. We don't know. But it's like a mess because, you know, I don't know. Like my rheumatologist told me what type he thinks I am, but he can't say for sure. He just says, I think you're this. And there's a doctor that that my doctor want me wants me to go to special specializes in it to find out the type that I have so that. But see, mine's not as severe for sure as my nieces, my brothers. Like I don't have nearly as severe as they do. But it obviously is bad enough that it has caused problems for me throughout my life. You yes. know, it, it, definitely. Um, it makes a lot of sense when you go back and think about, OK, this makes sense when years ago I was having these weird phantom pains that I could never understand. And doctors would look at me like, what is wrong with you? You know, you're only in your 20s. Why do you have these weird pains? And I just was like, I don't know. I have pain. I don't know what it's from. And it wasn't like I wasn't trying to get narcotics. It wasn't like that type of thing. But, you know, like when you're in your 20s and you go to a doctor or something and say, my arms hurt. And yeah, they yeah. do tests and they're like, there's, we're not seeing anything because you can't see it. You can't see EDS on a, on, a, on an x-ray or a scan. So, right, right. you know, they didn't know what was going on, but I did have pain in my arms in my twenties that I couldn't explain. And it was like this aching, awful, gnawing pain in my arms. And I could barely lift them at times. It would come and go. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was, but because I kept getting looked at, like I was, well, I'm not giving you a narcotic. And I said, I never asked for one. I was never even taken one at that point. I never, you know what I mean? Like I, I thought to myself, I don't, that's not what I'm here for. I would like to know why I have pain in my arms. You know what I mean? Like I was like, you yep, know, that yep. time I had never even taken a narcotic, let alone like, why am I, I'm not here to, I don't you know, like, why I don't want, that's not what I want. I want you to figure out what's wrong. Yeah. That's a drug addict way of treating people. Right. That come in because they have pain. And they would always say things like, well, you're too young to have this or you're too young for that. And, you know, whatever. So I would just get dismissed. So after a while, I just said, screw it. I'm just, you know, whatever. I'm not dying. So whatever. And I dealt with it and it would go. And, and a lot. Of, and, and then finally, in my 30s, it kind of just went away. And I didn't really have that much anymore. And then I had the arthritis that came up, which was a different feeling pain. Actually, no, it didn't go away because I still had the pain in my arms and stuff. But it was like I didn't think about it much. And it wasn't it wasn't bothering me as much I think as it used to or you know or maybe I just you know got tired you of it. You yeah you it. and you just don't you don't think about it anymore but I, I know it wasn't as severe either and then you know and then I went and I when I started having the uh the arthritis problems I kept going to my doctor and saying you know I don't understand I said I feel like I said, when I wake up and I said, I understand I have a physically demanding job. I said, I get it. And, and I'm going to wake up sore, but I've been doing this job for a long time. So I shouldn't be waking up every day as if I'd never done the job before. And I did it for 12 hours the day before for the very first time. And I'm waking up like, you know, when you exercise for the first time in like forever and you overdo it and you wake up so sore the next day, that's how I was waking up like every day. And yep. I'm so I don't understand what's going on and why I feel that way. And so they would still, again, oh, you're too young for this. You're too young for that. So it's probably just, you know, you just need to do this. Or you just need to, maybe you just need to lose weight or whatever. And I'm right. like, okay, so then I lost weight. And I'm like, okay, now what? Because pain's still there. I'm like, so now what are you saying to me? <laughs> you know, like it, it doesn't, it didn't matter. It, it, it was just, you know, I was damned if I do and damned if I don't. It didn't matter what I did, you know. And yep. And, you know, and then finally, they sent me to a rheumatologist. Finally, after years of, you know, bitching about this pain that I kept having in my joints, and, it, and I didn't even know it was in my joints necessarily. It just, I was just achy all over. All over. Yeah, it was aching all over. And that's all I could describe it as, you know. And finally, I think my doctor said something about my joints. And that's when I said, well, yeah, come to think of it. It is kind of my joints. Like, I didn't, you don't think about it. You just think, oh, I'm aching. I don't like, because I don't know, like, I guess when you're younger, you don't think of, I'm not going to sit here and think, oh, I have arthritis. You know, like in my head, I'm not thinking that. I'm just thinking I'm achy all over. Like I, 
I didn't describe it as my joints were hurting and maybe that's what I needed to do. But she had mentioned something and said something about, is it your joints that hurt when you wake up? Or she said something along those lines. And I, I sat there for a minute and I went, yeah, actually it is kind of like my knees, my elbows, my wrists, my, you know, my, my hips, my, you know, my ankles, like every joint. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like that. And, and she, that's when she went, oh, she goes, let me send you to a rheumatologist. And then they sent me to my rheumatologist and I still go to him to this day, but uh, she sent me to him and he immediately said, let, you know, he talked to me about the symptoms and he's, you're a little young for rheumatoid. He goes, but we're going to, based on your symptoms, let's, you know, let's do a room, what's called an RF factor, rheumatoid factor or RF or rheumatoid factor. And that basically it checks the levels of your blood for something. I don't know what the hell it is, but, and it determines whether or not your rheumatoid factor or whatever is elevated. And that is, is an indication of rheumatoid arthritis. And I was like, okay, he goes, but you know, there are times that it, it you know, it, there are, there are many times when this test comes back with a false negative. So he goes, even, even, even if it comes back negative, I'm still going to look into rheumatoid arthritis for you because it's, you know, it does have a tendency to come back with a false negative. Well, mine came back with a positive through the roof. So <laughs> he was like, okay, well, he goes, that's what it is because you do have rheumatoid arthritis, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So that started that whole journey. And then after I was on the several medications and you know, none of them were, I had a lot of bad reactions to a lot of them because a lot of those type of autoimmune medications I have bad reactions to. When he started giving me the depo medrol shots, that's the only thing that really worked. But I started talking to him about, okay, I said, you know, the, 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 the shot is working for my joints, but I'm still feeling like these weird pains, you know, in my body. And so then he determined I had also had fibromyalgia because, and I didn't even, never heard that term before ever in my life, never heard it until he said that. Yeah. And I was like, well, fibro, who, what now? What's that? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this new thing? And then I started hearing it more and more. Do you know, like when you, like, obviously I probably heard the term, but because it didn't relate to me and I never, and I wasn't like, ever since I've been online with like groups of crafters, and like doing live streams and meeting all these people on crafting, I've learned like so many people have fibromyalgia. But yeah. when I was before that, you know, before I had groups of people from all over the world and all over the country or whatever, I had my little box of friends. Like none of these people had fibromyalgia. So it never mm -hmm. ran across my brain. Yep. You know, so I didn't know the word. I didn't really know what it was. Never heard anybody say it as far as I remember. I might have, but like, I don't know. So when he right. said that, I'm like, a, I'm like a who, what now? I'm like, I got that. I'm like, what hell is that? Because it sounded so like fibromyalgia to me sounded like a cancer. I was like, well, I'm like, what? Because for some reason I thought of, um, oh, what was I thinking of? Melanoma for some reason or something like that or malignant or something in my head. When he said myalgia, it went to me. What? I have cancer? Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, no, he's like, it's a. He, you know, he explained what it was and stuff. And he goes, and he said, he goes, I'm going to, he goes, a lot of people that have rheumatoid arthritis also suffer from fibromyalgia and blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, okay, but there was nothing I could really take for it. So it was like, all right, so I have this, okay, big freaking deal, you know, <laughs> but you know, that started the ball rolling with all these things, you know, and then, but still, I think now, you know, okay, I know the fibromyalgia, but also the connective tissue. It's like I've got slammed from every which way, but, you know, like every which way my body has been slammed. Internally, you know, everything to do with my digestive system is screwed. Everything yeah. to do with my muscles, my ligaments, my tendons, my everything is screwed. Um, my joints, every single joint is screwed. Yeah. What's left? What's left? My brain, because I have such short-term memory issues, that's screwed now too. But it's the only thing I got left. <laughs> at least I have some some of that. <laughs> the only thing that isn't so far is my blood, and I've had a knee a knee. I've been anemic a couple of times, so I've had to have blood transfusions. I'm like, okay, as long as I don't get any other weird blood disease, that that'll rule that out. <laughs> hmm. But it's like I've been slammed with everything. My bones are all you know, sitting on top of each other, calling, causing stenosis and rubbing against each other and causing this pain and that pain. And I'm just like, Jesus, can I have a different body? Can they like do transplants? No, right. I've thought mm -hmm. of that too. 
I mean, because I started going down in 2015 with his fibro. Um, Hi, Leslie. That's what he diagnosed me with. I have an excellent doctor. My PCP is so friggin' smart. I can't even tell you. She listens to me and yeah. she comes up with what she thinks it is and then sends right. me to a specialist. Yep. That's what they're and supposed to do. Good ones will do that. But she's so good. She has diagnosed me everything that the specialists have come back and the tests have come back and said yes. It's not one doctor sending patients to a specialist and getting a kickback. Not that. Right. right. Testing verifies, you know, what she got to begin with. And I love that. I mean, right. I, she's the only doctor in my whole team that can do that. And right. She has taken me through this journey of um, my body falling apart, uh, but it started with fibro. Right. I couldn't. I felt like I had the flu. Mm -hmm. every, 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 my body ached, and it would do it for like a week, and then it would feel. I'd feel better, and I think, right. okay, I beat you know whatever bug I had. Right. Right. But when it kept doing that and I wasn't running a fever and I couldn't figure out why I hurt so bad, I brought it up to her and she did the, you know, the, the touch test on my knees and the back of, my, you know, all that. Yeah. And that's when she diagnosed me with fibro. Yeah. And then from there on, it just went to osteoarthritis and, you know. And I asked you already, you, you don't have rheumatoid? I don't know. I, yeah. I would say I do talking to you. I, I would I would definitely go have it go go to a rheumatologist and get tested, especially if you have pain in your joints and stuff. Oh God, yes. I can't even yeah. put my elbow down to my side. It hurts so bad. Yeah, I would I would definitely have it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it tested. You know, to have a, ha have your doctor take a look at you. To, you know, do the rheumatoid factor, and then also you know check your symptoms and this that and the other and see. Because, you know, because a lot of times fibromyalgia and rheumatoid go hand in hand, even though they're ones in autoimmune. And they, they say that it's possible that um, fibro, can, fibro can be an autoimmune, too. They're, they've, they've looked into that. I don't know where if they've gotten any further with that. But I know that was being looked at at one point. Because I think, of, with that, cause I think it is. Yeah, I think I'm, it might be, too. Yeah, I do. And I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not. But that's my opinion just from going through it. And I right. people that other people that have it would say the same thing. Yeah. Have, to have enough testing and enough people have it. It's, it's too soon yet to call it that. Yeah. I think, I think because it, it hasn't been that long that they've actually acknowledged that it like, um, Leslie said here that, uh, Leslie said, oh, Rhonda said, I got fibro before it was a known issue when the doctors thought you were faking. Right, yeah. right. It hasn't yeah, been that's that. That's why I was like, you know, like when I found out later that people that, you know, after looking into fibromyalgia and all that, I was like, wow, people have this and, you know, people get told, ah, you know, it's this, that and the other, it's bullshit or whatever, you know, and it was, I was like, well, damn, you know, I, I didn't even know what the hell it was when I went and got diagnosed with it. Yeah, I mean, neither. I, no I have heard of it. But now I know so many people that have it because it's such a widespread thing. It's yeah, such a widespread thing that people end up having. Like, did our parents suffer like this? I, I don't no, remember. My parent, my mom didn't. I mean, she didn't have, you know, I think she may have had a touch of rheumatoid arthritis, but if she did, it. You, I mean, I actually know maybe she didn't. I don't know. I mean, she was 64 when she died, but and she died of lung cancer. But before that, I mean, I don't remember her ever complaining. I mean, I think she had osteoarthritis in a couple places, but I don't think I, she ever. I was the only one in my family that had any kind of autoimmune until except for my sister who had a thyroid issue. And that was it. And yeah. usually, you know like any major autoimmune rheumatoid Crohn's is another autoimmune, you know, it's like, usually it runs, you know, it can be traced back genetically a bit, but not in my family, which is weird. Well, see my family, everybody's gone. They've been gone for years. Um, I've been in orphan shift since 2018, maybe. 
and I really didn't you know it had to have been before that 2008. Um, so when my issue started, I had nobody to ask. Right. You know, my mom's gone, my aunt's gone, my grandparents have been long gone. There's nobody right. left. So I had no um, warning that any of this was coming because everybody's gone and I never heard as a child or even as a young adult um, or if I did, I didn't pay any attention, you know? Right. So, hmm. you know, my mom died of cancer. That's the one I'm worried about or sort of worried about. Um hmm. And my dad of heart disease, but you know, I'm on a medication now, so I don't have to worry about that. But that's those are the only ones I know what my parents died of. Uh, I don't right. you know, my mom was feeling crappy for years. Um, it could have been any one of these things that we're talking about today, you know? Yeah, it could be none of them. I, I really don't know. So, you know, I hope to be able to give my kids more an idea of what is my you know what they might face when they get a little older right yeah that's the thing it's like if you if you don't know and you, you don't know your family history very well or it's like weird where you don't have a family history per se of the same things you have it's like weird to figure that out the only thing i can say we have a family history of is the the eds which is the connective tissue disorder which you know oddly you know i would have never known if it wasn't for you know somebody saying something none of us would in our family would have said known if it wasn't for when they did the autopsy on my brother that they discovered that there was some sort of you know issue that led us down this rabbit hole of saying oh maybe we should look into this or you know, that then my niece got tested for, and it just kind of like led us to it. But if we wouldn't, you know, and that's how it happens. And, and yeah. your family history is now kind of established as far as um, some disorders go, you know, they've been yeah. verified and now you're the future um, children and everything will have some kind of a documented history to fall back on. And right. I'm, saying I didn't have any of that and you didn't either but right. the future of your, of your relatives and everything will have this in their family yeah. history. so okay. it's you're you're just explaining exactly how it developed and came to that conclusion so right which is really interesting to hear you know yeah it's it's just yeah. strange how you're yeah. how things happen like that and how your body can do these things and how one person in the family can have all these problems and then everybody else, you know, doesn't have any of them. <laughs> I wonder, you know, like I don't eat a lot of junk food. I don't, you know, I don't um, do drugs. I, I Just the prescribed ones. Um, I don't drink. I mean, I just wonder like, is it something in the water? Is it something, you know, yeah. don't you wonder, like, what, yeah, what is bringing this on that, um, well, you know, I say that Crohn's disease is an autoimmune, and, um, but there, you know, what I have is technically now that I've been treated with, you know, treated with the anti map therapy, what I have is not really Crohn's disease, it's not the same because and it, it's i mean i don't want to get into the whole thing but the whole reason why anti-map therapy exists is because there were doctors that were and this was back in the 60s who were challenging that crohn's disease was um an autoimmune and that crohn's disease or what was presenting as and and you know as crohn's disease was actually a bacteria that was getting in from cows milk and meat into, into people's bodies and it was wreaking havoc on the gut and the whole, you know, colon area and all that. So, um, and the, the evidence was there because, um, it was happening to people that there was, there's a disease that cows get called Jonas disease. It's J O N E S or something like that, but it's pronounced Jonas disease. It, 
and it's a disease that cows, you know, will get sometimes and it makes them, and it's the exact symptoms of, think of everything Crohn's disease. It's basically Crohn's disease or what they say is Crohn's disease in cows. And it's all the same stuff. But they said that the bacteria that causes it cannot transfer through their milk and meat and whatnot. So, you know, so they just like dismissed it as, okay, you know, I get, people can't get it in other words. Well, in Scotland, um, apparently there was, you know, a lot of farmland and there was like a river that ran next to this farmland that carried the water from where the cows were and the people drank and used this water. Now this was back in, you know, the sixties and fifties or whatever it was, whatever. And and so the, the water ran from these farms where, you know, there was, you know, Jonas disease in some of the cows and the yep. water supply went to people in the town, the towns below. And all these people developed Crohn's disease. Tons of people in this one area just developed Crohn's disease. And so they tried to show that, yes, Jonas disease is transferring to people and they named it Crohn's disease. And but they're not connecting because they can't find this bacteria in people because apparently it hides dormant in it's such a small bacteria. And I don't know the whole logistics of that. You can look it up and, and there's all kinds of information and stuff about that. But there's all kinds of like a documentary about it and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so these doctors tried to prove that. But and they also tried to prove that giving a- antibiotic treatment works. But the problem was that this was back in the day and the study that they did, they gave, they were giving too high of a, of a dose of the bacteria. And so the results came back um, inconclusive because of that, because they were giving too much of the back of one of the antibiotics, which was causing more of a problem, I guess. And it was too like, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't the right amount. So it ended up not, the study wasn't, wasn't inclusive enough or something. So yeah. most of medical, most of the medical, you know, society field, whatever, just went, okay, you know, we're not going to look at that anymore because obviously they did a study on it. They looked into it. It's not that, you know, it, none, none of that works. So let's just ignore it. And so they ignored it and ignored it, and ignored it. And then somebody, a doctor in England or Australia, I don't remember which one found the study. He was, he was a gastro doctor and he had, you know, and he decided to do some research and found the study from the sixties. And this was now in the eighties. Now we're in the eighties. Um, and he found this study and he was like, huh, he goes, this study makes a lot of sense. Like all the information with it makes a lot of sense, but the study, he's like, what if we tapered back the medication and didn't make it so strong and kind of like adjusted the dosages. And so he did, and he started testing things and doing this or whatever. And he's finding that he started finding that the results were that it actually would, you know, get rid of the bacteria would cause people to go into remission, yada, yada, yada. And so that started the ball rolling with this whole, with these doctors, he teamed up with like a doctor in the United States. He teamed up with a doctor in Australia because I think it was the one in England or something that started this. So there was several doctors that got on board and they started really looking into this. And they started realizing that the, the, the evidence was like overwhelming. And so as they got into the 90s and the 2000s and they, you know, were doing further research because, you know, these things take a long time. And, they, and when you don't have the support of the medical community because they already poo-pooed it a long time ago and they refused to look at it, it takes a lot then to have them rehash it all up and say, OK, we need to relook at this. And so finally, it wasn't until recently, like recent years, that it became much more like, you know, and I say much more, even though most doctors still poo poo it, but now they've had so much more studies on it and humans have been tested and you give them the antibiotics and it makes them better. And and it's the only thing that works in a lot of times. So, I mean, it, it went from now Crohn's disease. They say that there is Crohn's disease that is an autoimmune and that's, an, uh, you know, that's when your body is attacking itself. Any autoimmune is typically your body attacking itself in some way. So if it's rheumatoid, your body is attacking your joints. If it's Crohn's, your body's attacking your digestive system. So Crohn's exists, but there is an entire whole realm where most people don't have Crohn's. Most people have a form of this Jonas disease, really what it is, which is not an autoimmune, which is actually a bacterial, you know, infection. But because mm-hmm you know, they can't get rid of it um, without a specific antibiotic treatment or something. And so I started, when I looked into this, I started reading it about it because I had Crohn's and my Crohn's was increasingly getting worse. 
And I was like, and every medicine they gave me was not working. Every of these conventional medicines that they give you with the doctors was just making everything worse. And so, you know, and so many people end up, you know, losing their rectum and having to have an ostomy bag for the rest of their life, you know, because of, you know, having Crohn's disease and they can, you know, they can avoid that by, you know, and it doesn't, and what's amazing is it doesn't really hurt to have to, to try this treatment. It's just antibiotics. It's not like they're giving you some crazy drug that's going to make you die, you know, or like some lethal possible drug. It's not like chemo or something where it's like, yeah, let's give you some chemo. No, it's not like that. It's just a couple of simple antibiotics. And if it's going to work, it'll work in the first 30 days. If it's not, then it's not going to work. And so it's, it's like, you know, you might as well try it like type of thing. So right. when my Crohn's got bad, I was desperately, I had been searching for a while to find a doctor that would treat me with the anti-MAP therapy, but then my Crohn's started getting even worse. And so I got desperate. And so there was a time when I talked to the one, remember I said there was three doctors in the eighties that decided to team together to start really pushing the, the, you know, to try to really bring this whole Jonas disease and the cows and the whole thing up to light again. Well, one of those doctors I was in touch with the one that was in the United States, he was in Utah. I think oh, yeah. Me. Yeah. So I started contacting him and I got I in touch with him. Going through that. I remember that. Yeah. That's and so started just coming to your channel. Yeah. It was, yeah. I, I, that was around, I had got, I had, I had had cancer in 2015. I started my channel shortly after that because I, you know, I, I wasn't working as much as I was, had been previously. So I was, I had more time on my hands. I started my channel right around there. And then over time, my Crohn's got worse. And that's when it was around that time. Yeah. Cause it was, I was talking all about it and everything and going through all that, but yeah, I was going to go, I have to go out to Utah for an appointment with this doctor and I was yeah. going to be doing that. But then he decided at the last minute he was going to retire because he was older. So then I couldn't go to him. So I'm like, Oh crap. So all this stuff happened. And then finally I found another doctor lo more local to me. And when I found him, he started me on the regimen immediately because he, you know, I was told by the other doctor that I was going to have to have my rectum out within like six weeks if I didn't do something. So I went to the surgeon and I said, well, cause I loved, I loved my surgeon. He was such a smart, you know, uh, doctor. Um, and, uh, I had talked to him and, and I said, well, I said, there's a treatment I could possibly do. Cause he was like wanting to have, he was like ready to, you know, the whole reason I went to him is because they were trying to, they wanted to take my rectum out. Like, oh, that was it. I was going to have an ostomy bag. That was, that was it. There was nothing else they could do. And so he said, you know, he goes, well, he goes, unfortunately, you know, he says, you know, we have to t remove the rectum and you'll have to have an ostomy bag. And, and I was just like, you know, this can't be happening. And so finally, when, I found a doctor to treat me, you know, and, and I had an appointment and I, you know, I talked to the surgeon, I went back and talked to the surgeon. I said, look, I said, um, I said, I have a doctor that I found in Alabama that's going to treat me for, cause he wanted to schedule my surgery and everything. And I was like, well, let's wait one second. You know, I said, cause I said to him, I said, there's a doctor that wants to treat me with this kind of sort of new treatment, but it's not new necessarily, but it is. And I explained to him what it was. And, you know, most doctors that I had run into, about this would always would be very negative like you know oh you know i you know i don't think i don't think you should do that blah 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 but he was the only one that was like yeah he's like totally he could go for it he goes because you know because i asked him how much time do i have here before i have you know almost like have emergency surgery to remove my colon because i'm just not going to be able to do go to the bathroom anymore he's like well he goes make a decision in the next six weeks is basically what he said he's like you need to do something in the next six weeks or else you know it's going to be bad so I immediately had my appointment, went and got the medicine the next day, started on the medicine that that doctor gave me. And, you know, like I said, that surgeon was like, you might as well try it. He goes, you have nothing to lose. You might as well. It's, you know, he goes, hopefully it does something. He goes, don't, you know, he goes, I don't want to say don't get your hopes up because, you know, people try new things all the time and they don't always work. He goes, I just don't want to see you, you know, get your hopes up and then have to be so disappointed. He goes, but he goes, definitely try it. It's worth it to try it, you, you know, it can't hurt. Okay. So then I go and I try it. And I said to the doctor in Alabama, my gastro doctor, I said, how long will I know? Like, how long will this take for me to, to know any different? I said, because my doctors tell my surgeons tell me I have about six weeks. He goes, we'll know within six, you'll know within six weeks. And I'm like, how? He's like, you'll just feel better. And I'm like, okay. And now here, keep in mind, I have diarrhea every single day, or I'm constipated, you know, like all these problems. And I was felt like shit every day. 
uh, you know, like just awful pain and, and discomfort and everything. And so I started taking the medicine, antibiotics treatment every day. And literally by 30 days, I felt like a different person and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And so it, you know, shockingly, I was surprised. And when I told the surgeon this, he was like, wow. He was like, he, he was like shocked. And then um, I ended up with anemia, which was not related to the Crohn's. It was actually a hemorrhoid. <laughs> Probably I got the hemorrhoid because of all the Crohn's stuff before, but you know, but it had just, it started, it sprung a leak. My hemorrhoid started leaking blood and I had some blood in my you know rectum, but I, and I didn't know what it was. Turned out it was a hemorrhoid, but in the interim of this, I became very anemic from it and it had nothing to do with, you know, my Crohn's. It had nothing, it had to do everything with, but in my head, I thought, oh no, maybe it didn't, you know, when I got anemic, I thought, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I, this medicine isn't working, you know, but when I went, yeah. ended up having to go to the hospital and get like five blood transfusions because I was so anemic. And um, I was in there for a few days, got that, you know, whatever. And they had to do a colonoscopy because they, first of all, you know, the, the idiots couldn't see. Okay. So for, <laughs> this is what's aggravating the, the, I didn't know, they didn't know where I was bleeding from. I didn't know where I was bleeding from. I knew there was bleeding coming out of my rear end a little bit. And they assumed that that's probably where the bleeding was and, and, and why I was anemic. And I thought that little bit of blood, but it was over such a long period of time. It had probably started before I had even started the anti-map therapy and all that. It probably started then, but I didn't really think much of it because I always had like, like, here and there I'd have bleeding. And that was just because I was constantly in the bathroom. So I just assumed it was that I didn't think much of it, but apparently it made me very anemic. And I didn't, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know. I just knew I didn't feel good. I didn't know what anemia was. I didn't know I was anemic. I just went to the doctor because I wasn't feeling good. She took one look at me and she goes, you're anemic. You need to go to the hospital right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. But then when they figured out that the blood was coming from my rectum, they wanted to do a colonoscopy in the hospital. So I had the colonoscopy done because they needed to find where the bleeding was coming from. And the hemorrhoid that I had was sticking out of my butt. Okay. Huh? It looked like a corn nugget sticking out of my butt. Now I didn't know it was there. Right. Not, not to be gross. You would think that this gastro doctor would have seen it right away and been like, oh, there's the source of the bleeding. No, does the colonoscopy. Can't find any blood through the whole colonoscopy and says, I don't know where you're, where the bleeding is coming from. So, okay. They, they get me my, my uh, blood levels back to normal, whatever. They send me home. Then they send me to, um, or I, I don't remember what they sent me to. I don't know. I guess, oh, they, they wanted me to have another colonoscopy so or something. I don't know. So I ended up back at my surgeon for whatever reason. I don't remember why. I think it was for that. I think they were going to do another colonoscopy. And I don't remember if he... I don't remember why I ended up back at him, but I ended up back at him, back to him. And he took one look at, he, he said, he, he looked at my chart, looked at everything. And cause I, you know, well, I think he wanted to see if I had, why I had bleeding coming out of my body. I don't know, but they didn't know that it was the hemorrhoid at this point. So when I went to him is when he said, he took one look at my butt and he went, you have a bleeding hemorrhoid. He goes, they didn't catch this at the hospital. I'm like, no. He's like, that's what the problem was. You have a bleeding hemorrhoid. That's all it is. He's like, you know, and so, you know, anyway, he, then I, he had the schedule to knock me out, take it out because I'm allergic to lidocaine. And they couldn't use that. So they knocked me out and took the hemorrhoid. But anyway, when I was at the hospital and they gave me the colonoscopy, the most shocking thing was, is that the doctor that did the colonoscopy, even though he missed the fact that I had a hemorrhoid right there, it was bleeding and didn't think anything of it. He did tell me that when he came back and now this is keep in mind, I started the medication for the, for the Crohn's disease, the anti-MAP therapy. I started that in like, maybe it was March, April ish, um, somewhere. I know it was springtime. I started the medication and by the time now, keep in mind, my Crohn's was so severe that I needed my, I needed my rectum out. Like I needed an ostomy bag. That's how bad the Crohn's was. Like it was bad that I went from that to now keep in mind October. So from spring, May, uh, you know, April ish to October was when I was in the hospital and they did the colonoscopy in just that period of time, my Crohn's disease went from so severe. I needed my rectum out to mild to moderate with the anti-map therapy. 
Amazing. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I was like, because when he came in the room to give me my results of my colonoscopy, he said, you know, everything looked fine. And da, da, da. he goes, I know you have Crohn's disease in your chart. And I just, and he goes, you know, yeah. And I saw some mild to moderate Crohn's, you know, but other than that, and I just looked at him and I said, mild to what and who? I said, you saw what? And he's like, yeah, it's, it's mild to moderate Crohn's. Like he didn't know that I was on the anti-map therapy. He didn't know how bad it was, I guess. And he just was, you know, cause he was just an ER, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, surgeon that was doing the colonoscopy. And I said, it's mild to moderate. And he goes, yeah, I'm, I was shocked. I thought it was still going to be at least like more on the, still on the like, you know, higher end or something. I don't know. But I was so surprised that my Crohn's was that much better in that short period of time. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, it was very amazing. It was crazy. And when I told my surgeon that, he was in shock. Now, now my, that surgeon that I went to, he was the one that put in, I had fistulas all, you know, because Crohn's causes fistulas. I don't know if you know what they are. They're basically tunnels that happen between your insides to the outside wall around your anus area. It's disgusting. It's the most disgusting thing in the world. And they're so painful and they're horrible. And so a year, a year prior, or maybe eight months prior to all that, he had to put drains in, which is where he runs tubes in where this tunnel is. So basically I had a, almost like a piercing in a way. It was very disgusting, but so it's almost like these tubes were hanging out of air, various orifices that developed on my skin from having these fistulas. And so I had to have these tubes in and they had to stay in. And he said, well, they'll probably have to stay in for a year or two or, you know, close to two years. And so I was like, wow, you know, and, and, you know, I got used to them after a while. I didn't even notice they were there really, but at first they were very uncomfortable. And, um, so when he did the, uh, when he did the, th uh, when he put me under to do the, um, the, the hemorrhoid, he took all the drains out because he said that because my Crohn's is in such good condition, I don't need them anymore. And I, he, and it was kind of a surprise because he didn't tell me he was doing that. And when he did, I was so happy. I was like, you took them out. They're gone. They're out. He's like, yeah, he goes, everything's going to heal up on, he goes, everything should heal up on its own now. And you shouldn't have, you know, you know, if, if your Crohn's is under control and everything is whatever, I was so happy to have them out. It was, oh, it was unbelievable. I was like, cause he didn't give me any indication he was going to take them out. Cause the last time I saw him before that, I said to him, how long am I going to have to have these drains? He's like, oh, probably another year or so. But when he got in there and realized that, that, you know, and he knew that things were going better and that things looked better, you know, there he was able to take them out. And he told me that, and I was so happy to have those damn things out. <laughs> wow. What a story. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow. But yeah, Rhonda, he does practice. He doesn't practice under the radar. He has a practice in two different places in Alabama, but he, he practices the anti-map therapy kind, a little under the radar, but not like, it's enough under the radar where he doesn't want me telling the whole world which doctor he is and, you know, whatever, because he doesn't want to bring like, you know, bells and whistles to it even though it's on the verge of being a, a FDA approved treatment, he just doesn't want to make a, he's not trying to make, you know, problems. Right. You know, he's not trying to, you know, but you know, don't muddy the waters. Right. Right. So, cause he wasn't even going to take me as a patient because he had too many. He thought, you know, he, he, he doesn't, he likes to keep a certain number and he doesn't like to, you know, so he wasn't going to take me, but when he's seen how severe, the Crohn's wasn't that I was like on the verge of having, you know, all this issue. He said, he goes, you know, he's, he wanted to start me right away. And normally he said, I honestly, he goes, if he goes, you know, I wouldn't be starting you if it wasn't for the fact that your case is so absolutely severe and it's dire that something happens now. He goes, otherwise I wasn't going to take you at all. Right. And it's just crazy. Well, I'm kind of concerned about what happens now when I stop this, um, narcotic completely because it causes constipation but before i started any narcotic i had chronic diarrhea right i went to an en um enterologist and she said i was constipated and that the diarrhea was just like moving around of constipation which right. It was chronic. I mean, like I was feeling worn out. I was feeling tired all the time. I was exhausted, um, run into the bathroom four or five times. I mean, urgently because I couldn't hold it. You know, it was horrible. And then when I started the um, 
the uh, antibiotics, you know, now I'm quote the unquote, you know, I'm the narcotics uh, or the antibiotics? Narcotics, I'm sorry. Oh, I, oh, okay. Antibiotics, narcotics, narcotics. So that, you know, well, they're all. Well, let me get, let me write you a prescription for a laxative. And it's like, no, I'm fine. Uh, you yeah. know, it kind of made me regular only due to the, to the constipation properties that it has. So I don't know what's going to happen to me. Well, those when constipation I'm properties, they don't, you know, like the constipation you get with narcotics usually happen with people that take it short term because it goes away after a while. So oh, the, that. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know how like certain medications will give you like these weird symptoms in the middle in the beginning, but then it kind of levels off when yeah. you take it for a long time. Well, that's kind of what happens with pain meds. Like typically, if you take it for a long period of time, it doesn't cause that as much. So you might have just run through some sort of course with something else, or you know what I mean, like where you were just having a problem and maybe it helped bind you up and it just ended up staying that way. But you would have had, like, you know, I, I mean, you would have had severe constipation in the beginning of taking the narcotics because that's typically what it does. It's either going to do that or it's not. Um, but I don't if, if if you're not if you do have another problem, if you come off of it, which I don't think you will. But if you do, you know, you might want to look into IBS or they might want to look into something that. But I don't know if that would be I mean, because I, I don't think the taking the narcotic is going to make you not have a problem. And then, you know what I mean? Like if you have a problem, it's going to be there regardless of whether you take that narcotic or not. Because yeah. I had severe diarrhea from my Crohn's and I didn't, didn't matter what kind of narcotics I was taking. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that makes more sense. It was just something that I've been wondering about, you know, you definitely. If you still, if you have a problem at any point in time, you should definitely have that checked out if it's, you know, because you could have IBS and, and it could come and go too, because those they types of things have a tendency to do that. You know, they said I had IBS. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Then, you know, and that but, can come and go, but hopefully it doesn't come back. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Let's hope it stays away because, I mean, they wanted to, they, they tried to tell me to stop eating. Um, oh, help me out. Let's see, I got this stupid brain. What's the grain that they, people try and cut out of their diet? Oh, well, it's wheat grain, I thought. Well, you mean to, for the people that are, are celiac disease or whatever? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, that's any any grain. I think uh, celiac disease. So you'd you'd want you gluten. It, it's gluten, but it's it's what's in the flours and the grains when they break it down. Yeah, gluten. They 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 wanted me to go on a gluten free diet, and they wanted me to do this and do that. Well, they, and yeah, they could test you for celiac disease, but going on a gluten free diet does nothing unless you have celiac disease. If you have celiac disease. That's the only reason that gluten bothers you. Otherwise, no matter, do it. Like there are people out there that go, oh, I'm going to go gluten free and this, that, and the other. It does nothing. I mean, it's, it, it, it does nothing but add more sugar to your diet because everything you buy that's gluten free is so much more high in sugar. Right. So it's like, it defeats the purpose. So that's why like when people say, I'm going to do a gluten free diet. I'm like, are, are you celiac? No, then don't do that because you're going to hurt yourself in the long run. It's not a diet. <laughs> you know, it's a medical condition called celiac disease and going gluten free. And when like, you know, like if a doctor tells you to do that and they haven't tested you for celiac disease, then that doctor needs to shut their mouth because they're going to end up making somebody fat and have <laughs> diabetes potentially because that stuff has a lot of sugar in it. Well, they you know, wanted to agree if it made a difference. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have made a difference. But, but I didn't do it. So, I mean, right. you know, and then all these other things came up and I've never gone back. Yeah. Because I've got too many issues. It, I'm letting it ride, you know. I'm letting yeah. everything ride from now on. I'm, I'm too old. I've been through too much medically, you know, to um, pursue anything else unless it becomes a real big problem it's a shame that you feel that way too and shame that any of us feel that way because i feel the same way you know and the reason why we feel this way is because we go through for so long not being taken seriously or for so long being told ah well it's this ah well it's that oh you're fine oh it's just this oh you know no solution ever brought to anything when it comes you know mm -hmm. like I get it if there is no solution, but there are solutions or at least there are better treatments for certain things, but they won't, it's like, they don't listen. They don't listen to what you say. They don't listen to, you know, our symptoms. They act like, ah, you're fine. Ah, oh, it's just this. Oh, you, you know, it's, you know, like they act like we don't have a say and that we're just full of shit and we don't know. 
here, take another pill. That's how yeah. I got. Yeah or, yeah. or just take this. And it just, it just helps the symptoms, but it's not getting to the root of the problem. Or it's causing other problems, but like you're on so many medications, you don't know what it's reacting right. with. Yep. You know, that it's a problem in itself. And then they yep. treat that. And then that you know, has all these side effects. And I think that's where I am. And I'm, I think I'm done. You know, right. I think me getting off the narcotic. Is it's, it's a shame that, 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 that they force us to almost have to do that, you know, because we get sick and tired of dealing with these doctors over and over again. Yeah. I am tired of it. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being sick. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying. It's like, when will it be enough? And when will, you know, something get fixed or helped or whatever? I feel like sometimes you go to the doctor and you tell them, you know, it's like you have to go through all this stuff. You know, you go to a different doctor, you, you go through all this stuff, and then they stand there and they're like, you know, oh, well, you know, and like they don't they don't go through enough trouble to figure out what's going on. They just kind of take the easy route because they don't want to deal with it, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But it seems like they don't want to deal with it sometimes. They don't want to take the time to really dig deep into what's going on with you. So they just kind of give you a patchwork. Here's a pill that will help your symptoms, shut you up, and get you out of my office so I can make my money with the next customer. Right. Right. You get three minutes and then you're yep. done. Yep. I, mean, I think um, getting the uh, MRI that I just had done and reading the results and I read them, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I looked up um, everything I needed to know. It was real easy to do. It's not rocket science. Um, and my people didn't want me to go to the neurosurgeon. Yeah. Um, don't know if I want surgery. I mean, that's where I was with my neck. Down to, oh, yeah, we'll do surgery. We'll get that. We'll fuse this and this together. I had like three minutes with this neurosurgeon, and he was ready to operate on my neck. I'm yeah. like, oh, no, uh-uh. And that, I never went back to him. Well, my yeah. PCP recommended I go to him again for my neck um, because it's so much worse. And I still haven't made that appointment. And with this stenosis in my back, I'm afraid the surgery is going to be even more drastic that they're going to have to do. And I, I, I just want to walk away from it all. I, mm -hmm. I don't. Yep. You just want to ignore it and <laughs> make it go away. Yeah, I know. That's how I feel, too. Because, I mean, like, I am, I'm supposed to have a colonoscopy every single year. Well, I haven't had one in almost four years. And, uh, you know, like. I'm supposed to do that because I could get cancer again. Because right. Chronic disease brings such a high risk, but I'm so sick of doctors that, and, and, you know, cause every time I go under anesthesia, it's, it, it affects my memory more and more and more. It makes it worse and worse and worse. Cause anesthesia is really bad for your brain. Um, okay. It causes uh, a lot of memory issues, short-term memory issues. And I have gone under anesthesia so many times throughout the years that my brain, I mean, on top of having fibromyalgia, ADD, which also screw with your brain, that causes a lot of my problems too. And I hate going under anesthesia for that reason, because I'm afraid that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse every time. And I'm just, I just have like this thought in my head that one of these days I'm going to wake up from anesthesia and not know anything. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. But I know I have to. And also, our insurance has been really spotty the past like two years. It's aggravating. So yeah, that insurance is through, right? And I'll finally have insurance again in a few days. Thank God. But I'm, you know, well, it's a part of the problem it is in order to get anything. Authorized, you have to have gone through. I had to go through this barbaric nerve test on my arms and my legs, where they stuck me with needles, and I think there were like sixty some needles between my arms and my legs to test for nerve damage for her, um, my carpal tunnel and you know tendonitis and all this everything that they found that I have due to right. it. What a barbaric test. And then for my neck, before they would approve um, 
uh, medication, I had to have this test done that, um, oh, yeah, before they would approve um, uh, steroid or some lidocaine or whatever they're going to put in my nerve or surrounding my nerve, before my insurance company would approve that, I had to have a fake one done to where they go in and they just inject salt water. Yeah. Okay. But before that, I had to have where they go in, they go in the side of your neck, down by where your shoulder starts, the side of your neck, and they go all the way in sideways instead of straight down through the spine on your back of your neck. No, they go through the muscle and everything on the side of the neck into the um, where the the nerve comes out of the spinal column and right. puts that salute. What the hell? What? Yeah. I hollered so loud. It hurt so bad. You just yeah. don't know. And you know you can't move. Right. And you've got the needle going through the side of your neck instead yeah. of, I said, what the heck are you doing that? Why aren't you going straight through the back? Right. Uh, and they wanted t that done twice. I said, no, forget it. <laughs> well, that's, that <laughs> that's like when I had the that, that nerve block test thing done on my neck, but it wasn't saline solution they put in. They put like a temporary medicine in. That was the worst experience I think I had so far going, you know, trying to get something that'll supposedly make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's just terrible that they... Yeah, pull me once, but you're not going to pull me twice, huh? <laughs> I mean, I we're going to go down through where you, you know, where I've had my um, spinal epidurals done, you know, right, right. back. So right. I started my belly. He's like, no, you have to lay on your back. I'm like, what? How are you going to reach if I lay on my back? And he says, well, and he put a mark on my neck and he said, we're going to go right through here. I said, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I didn't do Right. I, it makes no sense to do that. It is the most barbaric thing, and it hurt so bad. And they anthem. It was anthem. They wanted it done twice. <laughs> no, no, not. Yes, gonna. they were going to do it to me. They do two tests, and then they do the actual one. And I, after the yeah. first test, I said, "Nope, ain't doing this again." Because when I sat up, I, I I was in so much pain, and my head I couldn't even hold my head up. It was bobbling right. all over the place. I couldn't hold my head up. And they wanted me to drive after that. First of all, they wanted me to make a decision because this, like, supposedly whatever medicine they put in there only lasts an hour. So they want to make sure they got to the right spot. So they give you the medicine. They give you this medicine that only lasts an hour. They do that twi that test twice, like two weeks apart. And then they can give you the actual medicine that'll last like six months or something. So he yeah. did the test. And because I was in so much pain, he kept asking me, does your neck feel better? I'm like, no, it hurts worse. I, and he kept mm -hmm. asking me, but does the medicine, like the issue you were having? And he kept saying it over and over again. I kept saying, what don't you understand? I said, right now I am in more pain than I was before I started this. I said, and he goes, oh, well, that's just temporary. That's just temporary. For So can you just tell me because I need to know before the hour is up. And I'm like, how can I tell you anything right now? I said, I'm in so much pain. And I got so mm -hmm. aggravated that I just said, it's not working. And I left. Yep, and they did drive home like that. They came in with a questionnaire that they had. Yeah, you had to sit there and wait, and they came in every fifteen minutes for yep. an hour yep. and asked, "What's yep. your what is your pain level from the issue that yep. you had? You know that you came yep. in for. Um, are you still having the tingling and numbness in your hands and arms?" Yep. Uh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah and they did that. that's exactly what they did. So it was a very similar test, probably to what you had. But see, they, they didn't put saline in mine. There wasn't saline. It was some medicine to see if it was. So maybe it was the same thing. But I know that the, what they put in was a, just a, it was a fast acting medicine. And I don't yeah, know. But, like a, a, a type of, of numbing medicine. Yes. Yes. So it was probably the same test then. It was probably the same test. Yeah. And well, I, I didn't it, do the damn thing for me. No, it didn't do a damn thing, thing for me either. Me. And, you know, first of all, I think, I think that they put it in to the wrong area. Um, and because of my neck, it's, my neck is like, it, it's back, like, so your neck bone, 
it, it kind of like bows like forward. Like if you're facing for like front, your neck bone kind of has a natural curve to the front. Yeah. Well, my neck bone is curving this way. It's going the opposite way. It's it's compressed down and started going the opposite way to the point where I have a lump on the back of my neck, on mm -hmm. the back of my shoulders, where my literally my neck bone is poking out. The and down, they call it. What? A downer. Some yes, yes, um, but it's because of the compression because I now the tendons in your neck that hold your neck up, you know, or the muscles and the tendons because I have. A, a, Ellers Danlos or whatever connective tissue, there's no elasticity left. So it's just crumped onto bone. And that's the weight of my head. And I have a big head too. My weight of my head is just like completely compressed down every bone in my neck. Yeah. Which is why, you know, I'm in a lot of pain in my neck. Um, but you know, so they I think when they did the thing, they didn't understand that most of the pain that I have is lower down in my neck so your neck goes further down than just you know it doesn't hit the shoulders and then stop your neck goes down into your spine so it goes down further so if your your shoulders are here and that's your neck that pops up well down here that's still your neck and then it, and then it turns into your spine but you know that part of my neck right below my shoulders like right below mm -hmm. that's where it's hurting the most well they were putting this stuff in up here and yeah. so that's why i think they were putting it in the wrong place um, and, but they were like, well, we could do the test again. Well, I'm like, nope, that's okay. Because that was too traumatic. I ain't doing that again. <laughs> that's well, right. I went through those spinal epidurals every three months for years. Hmm. And I think they got in the wrong place. I mean, I could feel the nerve and I would holler, you know, cause they just give you lidocaine and right. the further down they went, you know, a little I'm bit allergic of to lidocaine. So they can't give me that. <laughs> It, it was it was ridiculous they just they they i don't i could feel that she hit the nerve but that wasn't the one that was giving me the most problems or where i felt my most pain right so it didn't it never helped and i tried to talk to her about it once you know and say i don't know that that's the right spot because i feel it more down where my bra goes Right. And you're up in between my shoulder blades, you know, yeah. you're too high. Mm -hmm. And well, they don't cause pain down there. That nerve can, you know, it runs here and there and everywhere. And it'll cause pain down there. I, I, we have the right one. Well, I, I don't they say stuff like that where they're like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You'll feel, even though it's it, you think you feel it there. It's not actually. I love when they say stuff like that. Right. Well, my body, and after a year or so doing this every three months and it not helping, why don't you listen? Right, exactly. We're sticking a needle in my spine, for gosh sakes. Right. Well, very close to it, not in my spine. To the yeah. nerve coming out of the spine. But they get to the root of the nerve, which right, right. You know, is... is too close to the spine for comfort. They're not going like out six inches away from your spine. They're like, they, they got an x-ray there and they're taking a picture every few seconds. Yeah. Just how close they're getting. Oh my God. I, no. All in the name of pain relief. You know? uh -huh. Yeah. And, and it's supposed to be for pain relief. They end up feeling in more pain and aggravated than anything. I've done. I, I, I know. I'm just, you know, this is I'm in that boat. I feel you. I, I, I understand. It's frustrating. And, and it sucks because that's, it sucks when people start feeling that way because you start to lose faith in the medical, you know, in the doctors and in the, in the, in the process and this, that, and the other. And then you hear of other people that, oh, I had such success with this, that, and the other. And it's like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's so aggravating, you know? Well, I mean, I, I don't want surgery and, and. No, I don't either. They've offered me, that's the thing, like, oh, we can fuse your bones in your neck. And I'm like, yeah, fuse your ass. You're fusing my neck. Well, you know what they can do for for this cord compression in my back is cut the bone and remove part of it so that that releases the spinal column. So it has enough room now to, to carry the nerves or the um, blood and the, um, the signals so I can walk again. Right. Huh? Uh -huh. It, it's six months to a year recovery time. Oh my God.
I don't want that. Right. But I don't want to, I don't want to make that kind of a decision. It's not like, right. it's not like I haven't made these decisions for myself by myself this whole time for right. all the other issues. Now I have to make one like this seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm bulking. I'm walking away from it. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what to do. I, I really don't know what to do, honestly. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly where I'm at with it because I don't I, you get to the point where you just don't, you don't know what to do. You don't, you know, like they say things like, oh, we can fuse this. And it's like, I, you know, yeah, maybe at some point when, you know, in my life, it might come down to me. Okay. I have to suck it up and just have this fusion done, but I'm not ready to do that now. Like, I'm just not ready to have like one of those, my head where I can, in order to move my head, I have to move the whole upper part of my body. Like, I'm not doing that right now. I have enough things going, you know, bad going for me where I don't need to look like that too. Right, I, I know. I get it that it, it's not talking. Talking. Well, they take it, but I don't want that. Yep. I have enough problems. I like, I, I'm. A, I guess I'll hit the point where if I can't walk at all, I guess I'll ha I'll have it done. Right, but right. That, like, yeah. to be your point right now. I can't stand for more than ten minutes. I can't walk for more than ten minutes, and I certainly can't sit. So it is pretty severe, you know, right. but, but I still don't want it done. And, right. and I guess it's going to take to the point where I can't walk at all before. And then hopefully it's not too late, you know, right, right. I, I hope it's off in the meantime. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it's, it, that's the same. That's how I feel about it too, is, I, you know, you, you're, you, I don't want to do anything. You know, and, you know, and then they say things, well, you must not be in that much pain. It's like, no, it's not that. It's just, I'm not ready to make a lifelong decision that's going to, there's no going back. You know yeah. what I mean? You can't, once you fuse it, you can't unfuse it. Right. You know, I, I, that's a scary, you know, these doctors that are saying this have never had it done. So right. they're out there to go, yeah, we could fuse it. Yeah. Blah, 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 or we could do. And it's like, yeah, that's so easy for you to say because you're not facing this. So don't like stand there and tell me it must not be so bad if I don't want to have my neck fused. I'm sorry. Right. Maybe I'm just stupid and, you know, going to have to, you know, hoping to find a different solution, you know, or hoping that there is a different solution before that has to happen. Well, that's what the neurosurgeon yes. said to me. I only saw him three minutes and then he left. Yeah. I didn't get to ask him any questions or anything. He actually left the room. Yeah. He, he didn't even talk to me. He talked to his the nurse. He didn't mm -hmm. even talk to me at all. <laughs> he talked to her and then left. And then she asked me if I had any questions. I said, no, I don't have any questions at all. And I got up and I left and I never went back. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> and, and I want him to do what? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, not going to happen. And that's well, the same surgeon that my PCP sent me back to. And I told her I don't like that guy. I told her exactly what happened last time. Mm -hmm. And she wants me to see him again because he's supposedly the best that we have around here, you know? Right. But well, he doesn't to the, help me. When I went to the orthopedic doctor about my neck that first time, the doctor that said, oh, do you have more fans, blah, 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 in your family? That doctor said that I said, you know, isn't there a surgery that can be done about my neck? You know, like something that to help it, you know, and I, I and he says, well, and I and I even said, you know, not like a fusion or something. He goes, well, there is a surgery, but no insurance company will ever cover it. So there's no point. So doctors don't even bother saying anything. There's a surgery where they, they can inject like a foam inside of like or whatever it is, some sort of material inside between to lift your vert, but they don't cover it under insurance. So that's why you never hear about it. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, so there's, it is. There's a surgery that can help you both yours and my neck to make it feel 100% better or at yeah. least a lot better. But they won't even mention it because it's never covered under insurance. How effed up is that that the insurance won't cover that? Well, do you know there's a swivel? There's a fusion, not a fusion. They don't fuse it solid. There is a ball 
like a trailer hitch, you know how they right. work, right? Um, that they can put in, uh, not replace your vertebrae, but put like take some out and put this mechanism in right. with a and a socket that Ooh. allows you to move naturally. Wow, but you don't hear about that. It's All you covered under insurance. All you hear about is the um the the fusing solid, right? Yep. That's pathetic. Yep. They have a the, the device out there. There's a big poster in my pain management doctor's office that shows it. Yeah, that's insane. That you know that these things are available, but yep, you're not going to get it. Only they never, you're rich. never once mentioned it to me. Of course not. Because you're nope. not rich, and they figure that. So and, you know they have a medication pump that they can in, put into your spine. They yeah. put a needle into your spine, and then you yep. wear this internal medication pump. My uh, severe yeah, pain, and all the drugs that I have tried to relieve my pain, and they've never once suggested that either. Yeah, that's ridiculous too. Not that I would go there, right. but I'm just saying if they have. And, and this is what they told me. This is the last drug we're going to try with you because it, we're out of options. He said, if there is, if there, if you can't tolerate this drug, we're going to have to go with non-medication treatment, which right. is physical therapy. And I'm not doing that again. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. I have done physical therapy so many times. Oh, never again. Never mm -hmm. again. In physical therapy. I've been four times. Plus, See, I'm, I'm for physical therapy in certain instances because there are some things where physical therapy is very helpful, but I when, they agree. That, they, when they use it as the excuse, oh, well, you can't have this medication or this treatment until you go through this many physical therapies, and it's like, what? Yep. You, so the medicine that could help me just mm -hmm. by, you know, much easier you're not going to give it to me because you want me to now go through physical therapy, which out of pocket always costs something, whether it's $45 every time you go there, you know, your deductible or not deductible, your copay or something. Yep. So you want me to go three times a week. So that's $45, three times a week. You want me to go for six weeks. Who's paying for that shit? That's right. you know? <laughs> but you can't give me a pill that would be covered under the insurance or whatever, because the insurance doesn't want to cover that pill unless I go through the physical. It's like a joke. It's a freaking joke. It is a joke. It's all money related. It is all money related. Treatment is not based on pain relief for a patient. It is about how much money can be made. Right. And that's why I don't want the surgery. I, I six months to a year recovery time. I mean, I, I'm, I just did like a, the internet reading, you know, on the the medical website. You know, WebMD and, you know, the reputable ones. Mm. And really, it's not rocket science. My spinal cord is being severely compressed. And the way to relieve it is to cut the bone and right. leave it. I mean, it's that makes total sense. I don't see that there's any other surgery that can be done. You know, mm. there there wasn't another solution for that problem. That's just. Is they just don't, they're just not gonna, I mean, it's not something that we're allowed to have because we're just peasants, we're not yeah. the elite rich people that can get these fancy surgeries, yeah. Well, so that's why they don't even bother telling you about it. So, let me see your tiles. Uh, okay, let me. I gotta take the ones out of the oven and finish cutting this now that I screwed it up. Oops. I'm not very good at following lines with an exacto knife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the color in the lines, apparently. Nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> huh? I said that just hit me as funny the way you said that. Yeah. I'm not too good at it. <laughs> I, just, I just made a mess out of that one, but it's okay. Anyway. I'll show you the ones I have here that haven't gone in the oven yet. Give it. So there's a bee and a fairy and some feathers and a tree, which I'll paint that or whatever when it comes out because that was one of those wooden stamps. 
and then this one I screwed up. You, you cut out? Awesome. Yeah. See, I love to do that. So, Those are the I could show better detail if I fix the stupid autofocus. Let me do that. Mm -hmm. I can see. The, see, that just brings me joy. I yes. just love to make silence. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. He's one to work with work, you know? Yeah. I need to get these out of the oven. Nice. These ones are definitely done. They've been in there like an hour. But let's see, those are done. Those are the ones I did the last, this last round of those flowers and the ones that just have patterns on them. That need to cool. Yeah. Nice. Just trying to use up all the little bit of clay that I have left mm -hmm. that I started mixing together. Anyway, hi Leslie. I said hi to you already, I think, because we were talking earlier. And anybody I missed? Hi Linda. I can't remember who I said hi to and who I didn't. And Chris. Hi, Chris. Well, we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't get to talk to anybody, so I appreciate that. Um, I deal with it all by myself, you know. Well, you can always talk to us about it. That's what we specialize in, in this group is our ailments, a safe place to talk about our ailments. Yeah, well, we have a lot of the same ones, and yeah. that helps me so much to know that I can say, yes, me too, yes, me yeah. too, me too, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, like, I'm losing my mind, because I feel like I'm losing my mind when I'm alone and dealing with this stuff, and I keep chastising myself, you know, come on, Kim, get up and do it, and the other half of me is like, you know what, Kim, you don't have it in you today, you don't, you right. know, you're allowed not to, I mean, you and then I got to rationalize it. And then I feel guilty. It's just like a whole right. thing. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. It's the cycle that you go through. Because oh, I do the same thing because I'm, I am I put myself down because I couldn't, you know, like I, I do, you know, I'll, I have a lot of days that, you know, that I will either only feel well for a part of the day or, mm -hmm. you know, or not at all. And, and I don't like to say that. So I don't generally say, I mean, you know, I don't say anything about, you know, being in like, unless it's something extreme, like, yes, my back's been hurting lately, or, you know, <laughs> my bathroom issues, why I had to cancel auctions and whatnot. But typically day to day, I don't say anything, you know, like, I don't say anything to anybody. I don't say, you know, I was in a lot of pain today, or I'm in a lot of pain all day. Like, I try right. to say anything. And I just kind of, you know, unless somebody says, you know, how are you feeling? Yeah, you know, I had some pain, whatever, but I don't go on and on about it, because I don't care, because it's just something that happens every day. And it, it also, it some days it just makes me feel angry with myself because yeah. I feel like some days I'm like, even though I know it's not my fault, but in my head, I'm like, this shouldn't be the, you know, I, you know, I should be able to do this, that, and the other. I don't understand, you know, and yeah. I like literally have an argument with myself about why I can't do something, you know, and, you know, like, cause there'll be days like, you know, it, it, it's like if I can't get something done or can't like, uh, you know, I hadn't gotten some orders packed that I need to, let's say, you know, or, and then, you know, I, I beat myself up for it and, because I'm like, you know, that day I didn't feel good or for two or three days, I don't feel good. And then, you know, the one day that I do feel okay, I have to pack it all in that one day and mm -hmm. I can't, you know, and so it gets to be like, you know, I argue with myself, I should have just done it the day I didn't feel that good. I should have just said, screw it and just done it. And, you know, but I think about that and I'm like, yeah, but you know, I was miserable that day, you know, like, and it's so hard to just say, okay, I'm just going to do something when I feel like complete shit the entire day, you know, when you spent years doing this, see, that's, that's part of it too. I've spent years of doing things when I felt like crap. Because it needed done or because I refused to believe that I had anything wrong with me. Right. Um, and I still have that problem sometimes. I, I mm -hmm. just need to believe that I have a disability or any disability. But the fact that I can't do something for part of the day, but yet I could afterwards. Right. right. 
people saying, why right. the hell did you do this earlier? Right. That's, that's exactly it. Because it'll be like the first six to eight hours of a day, I feel like complete ass. Yeah. And I can't do anything. So then by the time I actually feel anywhere better, because maybe I was able to take enough of my medicines in the right you know, way that, okay, it's finally kicking into the point where I feel a little bit better or something, you know, whatever, just something gave and just let me have a little bit of relief. By that time, it's so late that then I start doing something and then I start to get tired or worn out because now I'm trying to rush and get everything done in one shot. And it drives me nuts that that's the way it seems to be, yeah. <laughs> you know. And that's how, you know, and, and I aggravate, and I'm like, why didn't I just get up and do it earlier? You know, and, and I forget. I'm like, well, I know why, because I didn't, I felt like absolute shit earlier. And I, that's the whole reason why I couldn't do it then. Yep. And, and then like, like why, um, why there's like, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's like, why mm. can't you just have a schedule to it? You know? <laughs> oh, I know. It's aggravating. At least it I knew ahead of time that today I was going to feel like crap. <laughs> At least, you know, I feel like I would have some sort of a, you know, warning. Like first thing this morning, I thought I'm going to wash the sheets. I like to have my sheets washed every couple of days. Change my yeah. bed. Yep, I do that too. This morning I said, okay, I'm going to wash sheets and do laundry. And I'm going to wash my hair or get a shower. Mm-hmm. With washing my hair. I'll I'll take one every day, but every other day I wash my hair. And today would have been a wash my hair day. So I was going to do that. So I got my laundry started. I did not strip the bed. That didn't happen today, which I hate, but it just didn't, okay? It wasn't going to happen. Right. I did get a shower and washed my hair, which is a biggie to me because I have two frozen shoulders. Right. So... That's a lot of arm work for me. All of that is. And I cleaned. I did not run the vacuum. I might do that before the day's up, but I haven't done it yet. That's a whole other arm and shoulder thing, you know? Like, these things are hard for me, you know? Right. Yeah. And then I pay for it afterwards because it causes inflammation. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Exactly. So when I get on myself for being such a baby, yeah, it's going to hurt. So what? Right. Get over it. Uh, I, I've done it so long that I, I just can't seem to get over it anymore. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's discouraging. I'm discouraged. I, yeah. So exactly. I'm like you get yourself discouraged, you know? It's not, it doesn't even have to be anybody else. It's you, you do it to yourself. Yeah. If somebody else does it too, and they're just acting like an ass to you. It makes everything, you know, you then you confirm that you know to yourself that, you know, I should just do this and I should just do more, even yes. though it's not your fault. But you know, you can be made to feel that way very easily. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's intentional, you know, the looks. It's intentional. Nobody has to inspect the house and see what was done today and what wasn't. You know, right. I don't have any parents anymore. Um, if, if the floor didn't get vacuumed today, oh my God, it'll get done tomorrow. Right. Um, we will live with lint on the carpet, okay? We just will, you know? Yeah, it'll be all right. Oh, I have, I, my house is like a nightmare, but I wish I wish it was just vacuuming, but it's just so much. And, and then I get overwhelmed and I just put it aside and then it just makes everything worse. Yeah, it, it does. But with his respiratory issues that he's been going through all weekend and then in the hospital, I, I think the carpet could be vacuumed. So that's me. That's not him. Right. You know, that's me putting that on myself. Right. Um, he cleaned his health and, and stuff when he came home yesterday. You know, he takes the... Um, what is it the compressor and he yeah. blows we have a huge old fashioned air cleaner and it is a powerhouse and with two powder birds um, we needed it you know so we have that and he takes the, the filter and it, it has to be three feet around that's how big it is and he'll take that filter out and use the air compressor and blow it clean you know so he did that yesterday 
So I can back you today and, yeah. you know, keep some dust down or whatever it is that we have carpet, which is awful. Yeah. But oh, yeah, I, hate carpet. I probably should go and see if I can get that done because he'll be home in about a half hour. I'd okay. like to see if can get that part done. Then yeah. I feel bad that I don't have anything out for supper. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but here's what I made today. Oh, so that's, I made that that is. Oh, that's really pretty. That came out really good. Thanks. I love that. I just have it on this because I have this this little bit of chain I had to glue. I don't want it falling out of place. And now that's baked, right? Yeah, that's baked. Okay. Yeah, that's baked. these huh. are all. Done. That's really I cool. Together yet. But these are all done. I don't know what I'll do with them. Maybe cute. to make a couple of them that have a hinge on the side that you can open. Ooh, that would be cute, huh? I do yeah. have. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that with some of them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Um, You're welcome. Enjoyed today. And I'm sorry if I got too much um, to be too much. But no, you're fine. I feel a lot better right now. Yeah. So, anytime, girl. And thanks for listening. Yeah. Anytime. All right, everybody. Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Those little hearts are really cute. That would be really cute to make one with a hinge on the side. Uh oh. Don't fall, please. Oh, there we go. Trying to get my water dry, so I put a little bit of water in here. I need to paint these. And I need water to be that. Water, water. Do I like that brush? No, I don't. I like this one better. Yeah, it always amazes me how insurance companies treat you like they're your doctor and that your doctor, you know, is not allowed to be the doctor because they have to go through then, you know, deal with the insurance company telling them, nope, we're not going to cover that. So pick something else. And it's like, well, the doctor wants to prescribe or wants to, you know, you know prescribe me this medicine. But, you know, if, if the insurance company says no. And it's like, okay, that's the medication that they want to prescribe. So why are you saying no? It's what, what right do you have? You know, like it's just insane to me that they have that, that much control over your health. They're supposed to be there to pay for the things. You know, they're not supposed to, you know, tell your doctor no. If the doctor thinks I need it, then that's what it should be. It's just stupid. Stupid, I tell you, stupid. It ain't right. These are the ones that I put that little initial little wave pattern on. I want to color two of them black and these other two I'm going to do a different color. Just to experiment with a couple different finishes. Now these two, uh, I'm going to have to put another coat on those, so I'll leave the black out. But I want to do the halo blue-green. Oh, wait, I have the bottle of that I still need to use, I think. There it is. Halo blue-gold or whatever. I still have a little bottle of it. 
Um, I don't know yet, but I mean, I thought about doing, I could do like keep them and do a mosaic thing or use them for other things just to have, but I don't know. Haven't decided yet what I'll do with them. I used to make tiles mostly and I'd make them into little pendants or things, but I decided I wanted to do, since I already had the clay out from before, I said, you know what, I'll do some tiles. Are you doing anything today, Linda? You crafting or anything? I love this color of paint. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Whoopsie. I didn't mean to do that. I could probably zoom in a little bit. And it stops doing weird things when I do that. Uh, did I put those other ones in yet? No, I did not. Let me stick them in these ones here and there. These are the other ones I just did. Put those in. Leave it's 3.12. Alright, so leave those in until 3.45-ish. Um, that should work for those. making dinner to take to your sons tomorrow oh nice and the dessert what are you making what you cooking i don't know if i could ever do that make the food and then take it somewhere i don't know how people do that i'd be afraid it, <laughs> i wouldn't be able to transport it without it i don't know I guess you could heat it when it's there or cook it when it's there. I don't know. Baking, yeah, I can do, obviously, but I've never tried to bring a whole meal over to somebody else's house. Chicken noodle casserole and Dr. Pepper chocolate cake. Oh, nice. Yeah, so casserole I could see because that all you have to do is heat it. Yeah. But that sounds yummy. Chicken. How do you make chicken noodle? Do you do that with chicken? Is it with chicken noodle soup or something? I've heard of that, but I've never made it. I bet it's yummy. Chicken noodle 
cast roll. Oh no, I forgot a feather. Hey, open up. Get in there. I forgot that was on the other thing. And I just got that in there. Chicken, broccoli, cheese, sour, wait, chicken, broccoli, cheese, sour cream, co, co mush soup, what's that? Oh, combined. Mushroom soup top with fry. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that does sound good. Except for the mushroom part. I don't like mushroom soup. But <laughs> instead of doing that, I can use something else, I'm sure. Mm. Mm, we'll one more coat of the black on here. Now you can't hear your ears. Oh. Oh, that sounds awful. That's so weird. I used to get weird, um, my ears would get clogged up, and I'd, sometimes it would happen. I was doing, a, I would be doing a live stream, and my ears would get clogged up, and I had to keep like sniffling to get them to pop so I could hear. It was so annoying, and people would be like, "Why do you keep sniffling? Do you have a cold?" I'm like, "No, my ears are clogged. It's the only thing that's making it stop." And it would only stop it for like five seconds, and then I'd have to do it again, and it was very annoying. And I don't know why it did that. But then it went away at some point, and then it stopped happening. And I was like, "Okay, it's very weird, bizarre." Very bizarre. Oh yeah, baby friendly. <laughs> How old are they? They're eating solid foods, I guess. What are they, like a year old now? I can't remember. You know what? I bet I can use those markers to color the little cactus in and stuff on these. Uh, I could use paint markers, but uh, let me see. These other markers might work up here. Grab. Oh yeah, my these work. These should work. Or at least I think they should anyway. Let's see what happens. The uh, Faber cat, the pit pens. We'll see. Um, they don't work. It kind of died it a little bit, but no. Okay. Dang it. I'll have to use paint pens. I was hoping they would work enough. No, uh, probably the alcohol, like uh, the alcohol markers would probably work. I'll try those. We'll try it. Have a few colors of green for cactus and see if that works. Green. They should work. Oh, they're 18 months. Okay, so like a year and a half. So yeah, they've got mouthfuls of teeth. <laughs> yeah, these work. It's just color of the clay underneath it gives it a cool kind of two-tone look. Let's see, a little darker color.
these rotini noodles. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's good. Yummy. Greens. <laughs> it gags you? Why? I love beans. Huh. You don't like beans? <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, I like green beans and I like, you know, baked beans, that kind of bean. That's the only kind I like. I'm not a big bean fan either, but I like a few beans. I like a few. I'm just not into the, you know, some of the like black beans, pinto beans, and this type of bean, lima beans. I'm like, no, 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 no. No thanks. <laughs> I don't want any of those. Uh, oops. Oh, really? Ooh. Bean soup. That does not sound appetizing at all. I would not have liked that either. You love bean soup? <laughs> I don't think I've ha ever had bean soup, but I don't know if I'd like it because I don't really like a lot of beans. Yeah. 
would have liked to do that. <laughs> oh, I would have too. Gross. Oh. Hello? Why are you dried up? Huh? How is that possible? How does this get dried up? I used it not that long ago. That's bizarre and aggravating. Very weird. Probably just put some alcohol in it, but that's annoying. Oh. <laughs> so you were stuck if you were hungry. You were eating that. And they probably wouldn't let you have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich either, I'm sure. Just coloring in the pots and stuff. I need a different shade of pink, a lighter shade. That's maybe a purple or two. And a better orange. I don't like any of these oranges, they all suck. They suck butt. you in a second. He might start whining his ass off. Why do the pinks in alcohol ink always look like highlighter pink? I don't understand. I always like the pinks are so bright. I don't know why I do that. Don't know. Uh oh, I hear him. Dang it. Well, you guys don't mind. I have to go do that real quick. So I will be back in about a minute and a half or two minutes because I got to let him go pee. I'll be right back.
Okay, sorry, Tigger had to go to the party. Party, party! And do his business, which is. And then he has to come in and have a drink. And he takes forever to have a drink. <laughs> he takes his time, that's for sure. to do. I like to just color these all kinds of funky colors. Make them very colorful and different. Because why not? Like all the pinks are like weird colors. I just don't understand why, why they're such weird colors. I don't know why they do that. There's that one. You got your Easter ham. Ooh, nice. Wow, 10 pounds for $7.98. Good lord. That is a good deal. That's a deal and a half right there. Hams are damn expensive. I know, get a couple of them. <laughs> Take all of them. Take all of them and then sell them for more price. <laughs> Black market ham sales. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Let's see if they still have them. I bet you they're all got, they all got snatched up, probably. Show up with this flower. It's like an 
ink is so dark on that. I inked it too much, pushed down too much, probably. That's not bad. There's that one. Um, yep, yep, yep. yep. This one. And that one. And then I just have this one to do. I probably won't get to around to putting the UV resin on these for quite a while. But it's okay. Eventually, it'll get done. Lighter, dumbass. You look darker, but yet you're lighter. That ain't fair. to see what I colored it like blue different blue colors it don't show up that well but I probably will when I put resin over it I 
can color this little mandala somewhat. It's really hard to color something that freaking small. Nope, I'm not gonna try to color it too much. Just what I can. Just what I can. Good enough. Just added some color. It's hard to see on camera, but I added some color. These guys here, these ones are just the pink swirly colors with the pattern on it. I want to try to hit the pattern with some gold rub stuff. Uh, where am I at? Behind. I'm rolling over something. Damn it. You gotta get some of that. Get out of the way. Okay, let's find some ink of gold and stuff. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. You know, it's gonna be really hard to do like that. That one will be easier, but these ones are so wide apart. Oh, you know what would be better, I think, maybe, than that? Um, I have a, a gold metallic pen that might be better, a fine tip pen, I'm thinking, might work better. Uh, let's see, where is it? Up here somewhere. Uh, or not. Huh. Oh, crap. What's this? What is it? Oh, here's a Sharpie. I, don't know what this is. I think the point on this might be too fine point. And crappy. What the hell? I'm not sure this will work. She's doing. Oh, well, that just made a mess, didn't it? All right, Winnie, that's enough. I hear you. That's crap. It's kind of literal crap. It's in the trash. <laughs> it does nothing. I hate those oil based. Uh, Metallic pens, paint pens are terrible, absolutely terrible. I've not had one that ever did anything. <laughs> they all suck. I'm not sure why, but they just all suck. Um, the only other thing I can think of is just to, and I'm not sure. Not sure I could even do it. I could try, and if I can't do it, I can't do it. But hello. Crap. Stop being a pain in the ass. Drop 
see if I can follow the line with this easier. Yeah, maybe. It's a pain in the ass to do, but. It's better than making a mess trying to do that over with my finger when that's got too many spaces. I don't want it to go on the other part of the clay. But I think I'd prefer to take some ink of gold and put it on here and water it down a little bit because I think I think it would be a better idea. I'll mix it with that. Dip you as an alcohol. Oh, yes, the yeah. Sometimes that that works to get the nib moving, but that that particular paint pen never worked right. And I got it from the Creative Reuse. It's probably because I got it used and it just sucked from the beginning. So I think it was just a goner, and I just was holding on to it, holding out hope that I could make it work. But mm -mm. nope, it wasn't going to happen. Don't think. Where did that go? I need a little more of that. Just a little thicker. sucks but it's the only fine point brush I have that I think could work. Add some more of this back in there. Mess it up now. Well, it doesn't even show up on camera. Crap. I don't like tedious things. This is a tedious thing. I don't like it. But I'll do it. 
but I won't like it. not a very good consistency. I don't like it. I can't get any of it to work right. And I'm, uh, I also can't find a palette knife that I like. It's like the ink of gold is too thick. The other one's a little on the thin side, but damned if you do, damned if you don't. I'm just going to mush it around a little bit more. Mush it down because the ink of gold is like chunky. Drop of water in there. Hmm. Let's see. Annoying. This brush doesn't help because the brush sucks. I need a different brush because that one just is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible brush. Let's try this one even though it's a bit thicker. See if I can do it without screwing. No, I'm not going to do it with this brush. There's no way. That ain't going to happen. I had a brush with really long bristles on it, but I'm not going to stick this one in here. I don't know where it is. And I don't. Uh, what's this one? Is this pointy enough? Maybe. sucks. They all suck. They all suck douche. I don't understand why the hell it can't get work. I guess I'm stuck with this thing that has like two bristles on it. That's literally what it has on it. It has two bristles on it and they which it's the only kind of pointy brush that I have and it's taking god awful long time to do this and I can't stand things that take forever. I just want to do it and get it over with. And I hate the paint too because the consistency is awful. I'm just going to go back to this paint because at least the consistency was right, even though I didn't like the color that much. At least I can get paint on it when I put the dip the brush in, which I can't do with the other one because it's either too thick or too thin. Stupid ass. This will be the job, I guess. Even though it's not perfect, it'll do the job. I should be able to use the ink of gold on, but it's there two other. Yeah, there's another one up here. These two, I should, stop it. I should be able to use ink of gold on. They have closer together pattern than this one. This one, the pattern's so damn far apart.
she gets so excited when she sees a person. Like if I'm back here and I go out there, she gets all excited like she hasn't seen me all day. I'm like, you just saw me two minutes ago. <laughs> just saw me a half hour ago. Okay, now these two I should be able to take this and just go over because it is thicker pattern or more close together pattern. Easier, easier. when I drop it. Okay. Gold finger. Two here. I might just, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with those two yet. And that one. These other three, I'm just going to leave them like that. These two guys, I'm putting the interference on. And I put these away with markers. Pink one. guys here I'm going to put hmm, probably black over top of that I don't know maybe gold maybe I'll do the gold this one has like a somewhat close together pattern so going to be perfect. But that's okay. Mixy, mixy. That's good. Those are really pretty because they're halo blue gold and then the gold over top of it. These come out pretty. There's the juice from the cherries, the flavor of the frosting. Yummy. That does sound yummy. That'll be 
fun. Only two of these? No. Oh. I thought there was three of them. The black ones. Cherry Dr. Pepper. I've heard of the Coca Cola um, cake and the Seven Up cake. I, I thought I got three bottles. I thought oh. that too. Chris, right now is not a good time. Be right back. Hold on, guys. All right, sorry. Pain in the ass. <sighs> it's hard to see these because they're black on camera. They don't want to show up very well. like a blue interference. I thought I did. I thought I had like a blue. Huh. It was a darker blue one. Oh, there is right here. I, was say, I had a feeling there was. Now they got to dry. Now they got to dry. Those are done. Sure. See all the different colors, not completely dry right right there, but you can kind of see it. It's hard to see on camera, but it needs to dry a little longer, but yeah, mostly dry. I guess I'm making little boho tiles. I don't know what the hell they are. Don't know. They're just kind of whatever. They're just kind of whatever. Come on, get out here. Get out here and join the club. 
join the fun. Let's see. The tree is still warm. I like the tree. The tree is pretty. Heart. Feather. And eyeball. The fairy. And another feather. Another feather. And a bee. And a bumblebee. Love the way that swirly clay looks. Hurry up and cool off. It's so funny that the ones I did with the liquid clay are so flexible. They're like they're like rubbery. It's so weird. It's cool though. But those are the ones I did with the liquid sculpty stuff, and they're so flexible. It's weird. Very weird. Bizarre, even. I don't know what to do with these exactly. I don't know yet. I still don't know yet. I love when they're real soft when they first come out. Yeah, the I think the leaves are cool. Don't exactly know what to do with this one. I might actually um, try putting this in there and then wiping it off the top and seeing if I like it that I don't know if I will but it's okay I don't even I oh, don't have to I guess I'll just use a baby wipe I'm just going to go over the whole thing and then I want it in all the crevices. And then I can take this and just go over the top to the non crevice area. Take some of it off. This doesn't matter because I'm probably just going to go over it with a. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can do that and then just. Yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to go over the top with another darker color I think so that's fine I'll leave it like that no point in taking it off I was gonna let the, the other colors show the clay color but I don't really like the clay color for this anyway so it's no point there now let that dry and I'll go over it with a rub of some sort maybe black or something Jazzy. What you doing? I like the way that looks. It's that halo blue gold stuff. Let's see, what should I go over it with? Maybe. If I try, before I do black, I'm going to try dark blue and a dark purple metallic. See what happens. If I take it and kind of go in different spots. I 
it's not really dark is it that purple is not very dark but that's okay whoa hold on to it hold on to it jackass Show, yeah, see, you can show up on camera. It looks better in person. It's hard to get things to show up right on camera. And I don't like it. I need one of those expensive expensive cameras for it to show up looking the way it actually does. But I kind of like it. It's kind of funky looking. And the B, um, you know what? Let's do the interference. Oh, that ain't gonna work, right? Because I'm not gonna be able to get it. Damn it. Hmm. Oh, for crying out loud, my phone just doesn't shut up, and it's all spam, too. Every ounce of it. Drives me insane. My phone just nonstop doesn't shut. This is why I shut off my phone and don't and don't hear it ring. Then when somebody else calls, because I can't stand listening to the spam calls all day long. What I was trying to make his wings like gold, but not really working. Work. Oh, yeah, there we go. Just put some sparkly bits on there. With a sparkle marker. Sparkle marker. Let's add some sparkle in there too. Gave him a little interest. Made him more interesting. Hi, Laura. Give me that marker, marker back. What are you guys doing? Laura and Shazzy. white. Where did I have that white marker thing? I have 
add a white marker somewhere. Well, I could use this oh, up here. I can use this one. Oh, that's right. That was the, the other white one. Time for late lunch. What you making me? This one I haven't started yet. This one? Yeah, that one's working. You gonna make me some lunch? Late lunch is right. Oh, oh, that's right. You're in California, so it's not really that late there. <laughs> it's 4.19 here. I was like, late lunch. It's more like dinner. <laughs> oh, I should have Chris get subs while he's out because he has to run to the store and grab medicine from the pharmacy for me and i should have him grab jersey mics while he's there because i would like a sub it's an eye it's watching you my eyeball is watching you watching you. It's going to get you. This one here, I don't know if it's even probably just the big parts I'll color or something because I don't think coloring it with anything else would probably be worth the trouble. It's so small. Not there. Sparkly. It's gonna be hard to see the color, but I gave it some sparkles. Yeah, it's a stamp from this. I don't know where it went. It's a stamp set that I think I had in my store at one time or another. I had my. I 
Etsy or whatever store. Uh, what was the other one? Etsy and I don't know. <laughs> what was the name of it? <laughs> oh my god, I can't even think of it. Brain fart. Not Etsy, the other one. Can't remember. Oh, you got some boxes and stuff for shipping? Cool. This opaque stick, these things. Oh, okay, where the hell did these come from? Confused. What are these? Chocolate. That one sucks. That one sucks, but pig sticks seem to work pretty good though. If I can hold it. You got priority mailboxes? They'll ship them to you, Laura. You can go on their site and they'll ship them to you for free because they'll send it with your mail, pretty much. If you didn't want to go to the post office. some water in there, squirt some water in there and get them working. get like five and have it shipped to you certain ones you have to get like 15 or 25 or something but there are a lot of them you can get just five Mess. 
Oh, they, some of them I know they had five. Maybe they don't anymore. I don't know. I know they used to. No, I don't want that. Let's see. Um, I should add some sparkle to these guys. I think so. It's only right. Diana I made tiles Diana it's all your damn fault too <laughs> all Diana's fault I'm just making boho tiles just all different colors and funkiness Which I may or may not use on something together or something separate. I don't know. I haven't decided exactly. I haven't exactly decided what to do with them yet. What are you guys up to? Are you crafting?
Glitterific. Missing. Where's that purple one? You think your beads are off? What beads? You ordered beads? Well, that ain't good. things now. Oh yeah, I didn't do these guys yet. I have to do this stuff on those. And I'll pick that off the floor. Lose it. These two I just need the ink of gold for, which I already put the stuff in this. I wish the interference showed up better on camera, but they look stupid on camera. It's stupid. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't 
don't know yet. Not yet anyway. Don't know. Haven't decided. Don't know. But if I took a picture of them, they would look much better. Yep. I'll share it in the group. That was not what I wanted to do. Share it in the group. You can go look in the group if you want to see what they look like. Because they is there now. That's what I did over the last two days with these tiles and whatnot. Tiles and whatnot. But I'm actually going to get off of here because now it's 4.42. Oh, and I did these beads too, which I need to glaze them as well at some point. But I'm going to get off here because I'm going to eat lunch or I'm going to call Chris and tell him to pick up lunch, one of the two. And I have some other things I have to get done. But thanks for hanging out and crafting. And I hope you guys have a good afternoon. I had to go wash my hands because they're gross now. <laughs> And I'll talk to you all later. See you later. Bye.